All right, I'll call this meeting to order at 7.06. Are there any additions or subtractions to the agenda? Daniela? Um, can we please make my written report verbal for tonight? Thank you. Giovanna? Can I also make my written report verbal, please? All right. Anyone else? One. Can we strike SFS allocations for this week, please? Okay. Can we also uh, add a under new business a discussion about in person meetings? All right. Uh, does anyone else have anything to add or take away? I see a Helen hat has their hand raised. Is that a proxy? Hi, I'm kind of confused. I want to add a public comment. I'm not sure if there's a certain um part in the agenda when it, when I'm able to do so. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll uh, we're about to open up public comment. So you just raise okay. your hand. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right. Um, can we get a motion? I move to approve the agenda for this week. I'll second that. Okay, Sarah. Motions. Key on seconds. All in favor, please raise your hand. By a vote of 11 to 0 to 0, the motion passes and the agenda for this week is approved. Okay, uh, next up is minutes from last week. I uh, hope everyone was able to review the minutes from last week. Are there any subtractions or agendas or corrections that need to be made? If not, can I get a motion? I move to approve the minutes from last week. Can I second? Uh, go ahead. Okay, uh, Sarah motions, Eliana seconds, all in favor, please raise your hand. By a vote of 11 to zero to zero, the motion passes and last week's minutes are approved. Okay, next up we have public comment. So public comment is a time for individuals from uh, the association to come to USAC and give public comment or you know clarify questions or any concerns that they may have. So if you would like to be um, promoted to give public comment, please raise your hand so we promote you. If you're already in the room, just keep your hand raised and we'll get to you uh, in order. So, yeah. All right, first, first up, we have Kalila. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I am here today to speak on the um, transfer representative, um, as far as like appointing of a transfer representative for USAC. Um, and I like I don't know necessarily like how this is like supposed to go um but I like am speaking on behalf of Tyra Cobbs um personally I've known Tyra since she's gone to UCLA she is a transfer student as well so she um ever since I've known Tyra Tyra has been dedicated to improving um the UCLA environment for all transfer students currently right now she um, is serving as the African Student Union representative for transfer uh, for the transfer service coordinator, but Tyra's goals go beyond just helping out Black students, but to all students, um, especially for the transfer community. She works at the Transfer Student Center, and um, she's really done a lot for the community. Um, and she also, she also ensures that mentors have like the resources that they need. Um, so she's a part of like the transfer center mentorship 
programming coordinator and um, she's making sure that everyone has like resources. So it's not just about the, it's not just about black transfer students, but about all students. Um, she's hosted multiple events. She's currently working on the Blackburn Transfer Extravaganza. She's worked with Mecha for the Black and Brown Transfer Day. Um, she's hosted d- different social events for transfer students, uh, as well as like town halls to ensure transparency and accountability. Um, and she's active in many of like the group meetings, um, always checking in on students, making sure if there's anything that they need. She's providing resources to anybody who just comes by looking for anything. Um, but pers- like personally on my account, I think Tyra would be a great representative for the transfer student representative position because I know that she'll put her all into the position. She's very dedicated. She's going to make sure that everyone has their resources. And I feel like she can truly make change and make the transfer student community a lot happier and make sure they have the resources that they need and feel more connected to the, com- the community because um, that's a big issue. It's hard coming from a place where you normally have, um, you've set up your community and now you're coming to a new place. So it can often be um, it, like the imposter syndrome's a lot worse, um, but definitely she does all that she can to make sure that our um, transfer students are supported. So yeah, that's all. Thank you so much, Kalila. Uh, next up, we have Simone Anderson. Hey, y'all. Um, it's good to be in company with y'all tonight. I'm here also to speak on be- a Tyra's behalf for this appointment. Um, I mean, Kalila kind of said it all, but Tyra is a very upstanding, outstanding student when it comes to transfers. I mean, not just with Umoja and things relative to the Black transfer experience, but Tyra is very tapped in with CCP. Tyra doesn't just work in the BBRC, but Tyra also um, works in the Transfer Student Center. Um, Tyra is always, whether it's Instagram and running like four different Instagram pages or whether it's coming to these group me chats or just having events, Tyra is always, um, you know, telling people about their resources. And this is a good sign of an empowered student, right? Which is what I'm sure all of y'all view y'all selves that are sitting here on council right now. And I'm sure you want some like-minded company. Um, She is somebody that takes initiative and, you know, that is very familiar, you know, and I think embodies well that student run model taking on um, that initiative. I mean, look at all the work that she's doing right now and it's completely uncompensated and she's not just doing work for the black transfer community, but um, to Kalila's point, all students, um, you know, she's doing collabs with Mecha and uh, other mother organizations. And she's really just, um, you know, this is stuff that I haven't even think about. Tyra's added a lot of more stuff to her job description, you know, and quite frankly expanded more beyond what's in the ASU's constitution for all that she does. Um, So, you know, I I just think uh, what not to have somebody better and we ain't just gonna talk about educated. I mean, look at what Tyra has been through in her own experience. Tyra got a couple associate's degrees. What, What does that mean? I mean, she's She's had to go through her own struggles and and transferring here, as I'm sure y'all can relate to. But look at her coming out on the other side and she's hungry and she's back for more. And we ain't even going to talk about that, that near perfect. uh, What you you got, Tyra, like a 3.9 or something? I should know this huh? as somebody who works for a retention project. But like y'all are out here um, going above and beyond and, um, you know, really um, redefining um, what it means to be a student leader on this campus um, and Tyra is really stepping forward so um, I really hope that she is her work is a model and an example for everybody to um, learn from she's not just taking on all these roles for clout or for resume builders and not doing any work and half ass and doing her job no she she really walks the walk as much as she talking that talk so um I think she's more than qualified and her resume definitely shows that she has what it takes to bring on um, this position thank you so much I, uh public com- commenters let's try to keep it like to a minute okay but hey thank you um next up we have Bradley Hi, everyone. 
Um, my name is Bradley, and I came here two weeks ago to voice my complaints about poor communication from many of the USAC funds I applied to for the Idea Hacks Hardware Hackathon put on by IEEE UCLA. Um, I just wanted to come back um, here today and let you know that we put on a really successful event, and I really appreciate you guys, especially ARC and AAC, for moving really quickly to finalize and push our RECs through SGA. Um, just a quick summary, our event hosted over 240 for uh, participants from both UCLA and community colleges who spent 36 hours designing over 40 unique projects um, that had really cool um, topics in electrical, mechanical, and computer engineering. Uh, I'm going to send a link in chat of some of the projects students created. Um, they're really interesting, and I really want to quickly highlight one. Our first place prize uh, went to a cryptocurrency-based Monopoly game that uses computer vision to autonomously track every player's move on a custom laser-cut game board um, and display the current game state on an LED panel that like mimics a stock market style graph. Um, I'm going to put a link to their presentation in the chat also because it's really cool and I honestly don't know how they were able to create this in such a short amount of time. Um, and then beyond technical projects, we had a chocolate tasting, live uh, performances by UCLA's Game Music Ensemble, five different workshops, um, free meals and snacks, and a couple industry sponsors who spent the weekend there. Um, so I know I've had my grievances with you guys, and I hope you haven't been too stressed out or offended by that, but I've seen firsthand what is possible when you come together and work promptly to support the tens of thousands of students of here. Um, I'm still waiting on BOD and TGF to sign off on two recs for me, but overall, I really appreciate you helping out, helping me put on this event, and I know our hundreds of participants will remember it from years to come. Um, and I know this is a little bit long, but I just want to quote one thing that one student told me in our post event survey. Um, they're a participant from El Camino Community College, College and they said, This experience, uh, experience made me realize how fun electrical engineering is, and that it's not just electronics, but coding and being creative. I learned that I will stick with electrical engineering, and I can't wait to get better and learn more. I'm a community college student, so for me, it was, it was awesome being at one of the best four year universities in the world. Um, I would definitely come back and participate and I'll work hard this year to learn more. Um, so thank you guys again. Um, I just want to give you an update so you can see some of the positives of, of all the work that you guys do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bradley. I'm glad everything went well with that. Uh, next up, we have Helen. Hello, can you all hear me okay? I'm outside. I do apologize for that. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, wonderful. I'm here in support of Tyra Cobbs for the 2023 Transfer Student Representative position. I know that there have been other supporters who have already um, detailed all of her accomplishments, but I'm here to explain to you all as a transfer student myself, going on an anecdotal experience just with Tyra, beyond the fact that she is a McNair scholar, beyond the fact that she is absolutely outstanding on her resume, her interpersonal skills are so absolutely beyond phenomenal. Tara is incomparable compared to, um, in my opinion, to any other person who's running just for the mere fact that she is absolutely outstanding. Um, the fact that she's able to absolutely bring a community of transfer students from wide ranges of experiences and personal backgrounds is what the TSR position is meant to do. I'm absolutely excited to see what she's able to um, do and become just from all of the things that she has accomplished already. And I'm excited to see her blossom into this future position. Um, go Tyra, I'm obsessed with you. You're amazing. And I hope to be like you one day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up we have Clara. Hi guys, <laughs> um, it's me, Clara. <laughs> um, I'm here with Alper's weekly update on what we've been doing um, for context. Uh, last week, we started our new ocean conservation campaign um, with a really big week of action. Um, we had tons and tons of events with lots of new volunteers getting, get involved. Um, and some highlights where we had a couple of our letters to the editor published in local newspapers. Um, and also, we went to Santa Monica on Friday to do a beach cleanup. Um, and we're finishing off our recruitment drive. And we're super excited to have lots of new students uh, participating this quarter. Um, and that all uh, culminated today, we had our big kickoff meeting um, just like a couple hours ago, um, and over 40 students came and we're really excited to make change with all of them this quarter. Um, and lastly, for the next two weeks, so week, week four and five, 
um, we'll be running our pledge fundraising drive. Um, CalPERG is funded by 25,000 students across the state uh, who opt in to become CalPERG members by adding a $10 quarterly activity fee to their tuition bill. Um, and all of us students pooling our money together like this gives us the resources, staff training, and political power um, to run strategic campaigns that actually make a difference. Um, and we also have a contract with UCLA that we have to sign up 10% of the undergraduate student body in order to keep our chapter on campus. Um, so in order to hit that 10% threshold, each quarter we run really big pledge drives in order to sign up enough members. Um, so we're launching our winter pledge drive on Monday and we're gonna get tons of grassroots support for our Oceans campaign um, and get lots of students excited to have their voice heard in politics. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about what we're doing right now. Um, thanks for listening. I hope you guys have a great meeting. Uh, thank you. All right, next up we have Jamila. Hi everyone, good afternoon, or good evening. Um, I'm here to share my support for Tyra Colts as Gen Rep Transfer Coordinator. Tyra is a remarkable person and has truly gone above and beyond to help her fellow Bruins. During my time knowing Tyra, I've seen her work tirelessly to help Black Bruins and the transfer community. She works at the BBRC as a program coordinator and is the transfer coordinator for ASU. She's extremely personal and always willing to lend a helping hand. She's also hosted a series of McNair application workshops to help inc increase Black student acceptance into the McNair research program, this year being the highest rate of Black students accepted. And as a transfer student, Tyra knows the strengths and weaknesses of the transfer community, and she knows what's needed to improve the transfer experience. Again, I wholeheartedly support Tyra running as a USAC transfer rep, and I hope you will too. She's dedicated, hardworking, and eager to improve the transfer student experience and serve as a pillar of support for the transfer community. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. All right, next up we have Saul. Hi everyone, my name is Saul. Um, I just wanted to keep it short and sweet. Wanted to talk about Tyra and why I think she should be USAC transfer rep. Um, basically she is the embodiment of what a transfer student can be when they're at the top of their game. I wholeheartedly believe that she, that she is that. She got here, she hit the ground running. She's doing research and absolutely doing the most out here. Um, helping various organizations across campus. Uh, sometimes when I'm on the group meet, I see reminders sent by Tyra about transfer resources, whether it's about uh, transfer student career fairs, free food, free resources, and anything possible. Um, I think she'd be absolutely perfect for this position. And I'm excited to see what Tyra does when she gets appointed as a USEC transfer rep. Thank you. Uh, next up we have uh, Cian. Hi, my name is Cyan. I'm also here in support of Tyra for the transfer rec. I actually went to community college with Tyra. So we both went there together and we transferred here to UCLA. When I got there, she was already in a leadership position in Umoja and she was like a mentor to me because everyone's already talked about all the programs that she's in. But I want to talk about how I feel like her having this position could also inspire others to reach for more and reach for higher because from knowing her, it showed me that I can also do more things in the transfer community. And I've always looked to her for motivation and guidance into getting involved in programs to help all Black Bruins and Black transfers and transfers throughout the throughout UCLA in general. So she's very much a big motivation to me and I believe to everyone else around her as a whole. So that's why I believe she'd be a great representative. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up we have Jeffrey. Hi everyone, I'm here tonight to speak to y'all in my capacity as CAC's ARC Funding Director. I wanna speak first to the um, issue that occurred yesterday with the Nigerian Student Union. Um, I wanna make clear first that um, we have pending applications from cultural identities across different identities and it was never a racially or ethnically or culturally motivated um, like decision to not support or answer to any of these uh, or any of these um, applications. I think that characterization was really harmful to me and Alicia to be painted out as us racially trying to block people away from funds. The second thing that I want to talk about is I took up the ARC funding director position because Alicia had no support. I had no intent to serve in the role this year. But after seeing how much she was struggling, I decided to help out because of my experience with SIOC funding. 
in my experience, I'm barely being onboarded and I have to deal not only with almost two to three ARC applications coming in every day, which may not seem like a lot, but that means that we're getting 10 to 15 every week in a, in quarters where we have two funding cycles. Additionally, Alicia and I are still trying to pay out community fund stipends that were allocated by last year's ARC staff. We're still also trying to pay out reimbursements that were made to Latinx graduation last year, where, where folks are literally now having to pay funds um, out of their own pocket. So there's a lot going on. We're trying to catch up but we need support. And like, I re I know that like other funds are struggling and I know that students need their money, but I also like, I'm here today also to like make it clear to council, but also to the student body that if, like if y'all need these funds, y'all should be applying to these committees. You know, like um, I think it's an unfair expectation for anyone to have that council or their funding directors should be turning out applications every day as if they don't have jobs, lives and responsibilities outside of this work. I know we all took this work on willingly, but I think that the, the I think that the school community owes council and our funding directors some slack. And I think that we need to be kind to each other. And I think um, I'm really like motivated that SGA is meeting with Alicia and I tomorrow to try and to try and come up with a plan to move forward. But I think um, I would really ask that council figure out um, a way to move forward and resolve this issue and to create a process. Um, that can be applied year to year when funding directors are missing, when funding committees aren't being filled to be able to um, get these funding apps and get um, answers to students fast because it's not fair and no student should have to face the brunt of it, either a council member or um, a funding director. And then the last thing that I'll say, and this is sort of unrelated, is there's a USAC appointment on the CRC who has not been fully appointed and has been missing paychecks for all of fall and for all of winter. I would highly, highly petition that council fix this issue tonight. All it requires is a memo from the appointing officer. I don't want to bring up names or anything just because uh, since it is like a hiring issue, it is um, private, um, but I would just ask that council resolve that issue immediately at this point. Um, it's three payments that that student has missed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up is Brenda. Hello, um, I'd like to just speak on behalf of Tyra Cobbs um, being appointed to the transfer USAC rep. Um, she's been an amazing person and I had the opportunity to meet her and bond with her through McNair. Um, and I've just seen the tireless work that she's put in, um, just genuine from her heart, wanting to see all communities kind of grow. Um, and it's just so inspiring, as many others have said, um, to see someone who not only like upholds herself to these like strong to these really like high standards, um, she makes sure that she holds others to them and lets them know that it's possible to achieve them. And she literally leads by example. And so I feel like she's just amazing for this position because she brings in that um, hope and that ray of light when honestly it can get really difficult. Um, and I honestly feel like she gives this humane perspective to academics because it's not just a, you're defined by your GPA or academics thing. Like it's good to have that, but she acknowledges the fact that mental health is important. Um, and she's a big champion for that, which I feel like is a really, important perspective to take on um, when it comes to these rigorous spaces. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll read the written comment last. Next up is uh, Hannah. Hello. Uh, hi there. So I would also like to um, uh, support uh, Fire Cops for, as a transfer representative. Um, so I'd like to say that Vera has been really helpful as a first year transfer. Um, she has uh, really uh, stepped up like and helped out and reached out with a bunch of resources to help uh, get adjusted and um, into UCLA. And also she's hosted uh, various um, social transfer uh, socials and game nights as well as um, like uh, someone mentioned earlier, uh, she has helped get the highest amount of black brooms in McNair. And she has also helped me with my McNair application, uh, which I'm thankful for. And uh, I believe that is really uh, qualified, if not overqualified for this position. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, Heaven? Hey everyone, um, I apologize for my noisy background. But I'm also here to um, support Tyra in her um, running to be USAC 
transfer representative, um, not to reiterate everything everyone has already said, but I would like to add two things that I feel like makes Tyra qualify for the position. Number one, with the fact that she is the epitome of like what it means to be, I think, a transfer and like um, has worked tirelessly to make sure that transfers are advocated for in a lot of different senses, like in terms of resources and things like that. I think she works hard to make sure that transfer representation is included when we talk about representation period, not just as a black student, um, because we all know that she is that, um, but as a transfer student, because I think sometimes transfer students get overlooked in their perspectives and their ideas and things that they can provide to the community. Um, And so I think that Tyra does an amazing job of like advocating for transfers to be in spaces that don't normally have that kind of representation from McNair um, to other leader position, leadership positions on campus. And I think something else that Tyra really does well is advocate for like transfers to, to be more united within the UCLA community in general. I feel like sometimes we uh, have a disconnect between us uh, students that came to UCLA as freshmen and transfer students. And she works hard to like bridge that gap to make sure that you know, that they feel included and that they feel welcome at UCLA, regardless of like their journey to get there. Um, and so I'll get off my soapbox, but um, that's what I would like to add to the conversation about Tyra and I fully support um, her getting this position for USAC transfer representatives. All right, thank you so much. And then, um, Naeem, I see you have a hand. Uh, we're gonna, did you have, was that on purpose? Or to read the one that's in the Q and A. Okay. Um, just so that didn't get lost, but um, person said, I can't stay long, but I wanted to second everything that was said by Simone about Tyra Cobbs and my support for her as a USAC transfer representative. Though I don't work with her directly, I see the work that Tyra does for the transfer community, particularly the Black Bruin transfer community. And not only is she an active member, she truly cares about the communities, plural, she serves. She is both the standard and the example of an exemplary leader. In the short time I've known Tyra, she has served as an access point for beneficial resources for mental health, something that's really important to me as a Black student at a predominantly white institution, and somehow manages all her ex- obligations while remaining a dynamic member of the Black community. To know Tyra is to know that she is truly a pillar of the Black community at UCLA and has made more tangible change in the short time she's been here as a transfer than others. All right, awesome, thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who came out tonight and spoke. Uh, We'll be closing public comment at 7.34. All right, next up we have funding. Uh, I understand that uh, Josh has a proxy here tonight, so... um, We'll, first, we'll go into capital contingency. Um, hi, yeah. Uh, could we first um, strike capital contingency allocations? Uh, we've already uh, voted the agenda in, so if you don't have anything to say for it, you could just say we'll you'll talk about it next week or something. Okay, perfect. Should I present the allocation then just now? Did, well, you wanted to strike capital contingency? Uh, yes, and then we have a contingency programming um, allocation update as well. Okay, so for capital contingency, you could just say there's no capital contingency, and then you can just go to ca- uh, contingency program. Just uh, go to that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there's no capital contingency this week, but um, this week we had a total contingency programming request of $13,449.69, and we recommend an allocation of $9,172 for 15 non-USAC entity-related events and one USAC-related event. I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Can you put those numbers in the chat for yes. um, our Thank you. I'll send it right now. Um, Phoebe has a question regarding capital contingency. Do you want to ask that question, Phoebe? Yeah, sure. I was just curious about capital contingency because I know that it wasn't like a an operating body for a while, but I didn't realize it had no funding. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna talk to Josh about that. Um, and if possible, can we email you back about um the capital contingency fund question? Yeah, totally. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, Jessica, you said you can answer that question. Yeah. So capital contingency um is a funding source that receives its funds from surplus. Uh, 
So it's part of your bylaws from $150,000 of surplus gets put into capital contingency, contingency programming, and BOD programming. So capital contingency as a funding source doesn't is not open until it has money available from surplus. And we don't have those numbers yet because Linda and team are still closing out the audit. So once the audit is fully closed and we know what the number is um, from basically carryover from last year, then we will bring that number to you all to vote on. And once you do that vote, um, then capital contingency will be available for organizations in Kirkoff to apply to to fund capital items like furniture, um, computer equipment, things like that. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. All right, uh, can we get a motion? I move to approve the suite's contingency programming of the requested amount in the chat. I'll second it. All right, Naomi, motions, Keon, seconds, all in favor, please raise your hand. All right, by a vote of 12 to 0 to 0, the motion passes and contingency program is approved. Next up, we have uh, SWC uh, programming fund allocation. Hi. Um, so this week, the SWC pro programming fund allocated $2,635.22 to non SWC groups. And I will drop that in the chat. All right, can we get a motion if there, there's no questions? Move to approve the SWC programming fund. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. That's I, I forgot. That's a consent item. My bad. So does anyone have any questions, concerns, or comments about this? Uh, Alicia, I see you have a hand raised. Is that an old one? It's an old one. Sorry. All right. So there's no questions, concerns, or comments, or objections. Um, the fund is approved. Uh, next up, we have Bru Bruin Advocacy Grant Allocations. Devon? There's no funding for it, so I was late. I couldn't uh, strike it. Okay, no problem. Uh, next up, we have AS ASRF Allocations. Daniela? Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, sorry for cutting you off. Um, so this week for ASRF, we allocated $998 to one non-USAC entity. Um, so I'll put that in chat, which will also contain information about TGM's allocations for the week. Um, so for TGMF, we allocated $1,930 to three non-USAC entities. Both, I believe, are consent items. All right. Does anyone have any questions, concerns, or comments? Okay, if not, then AS, ASRF allocations are approved and AAC travel mini grant allocations are approved. All right, next up we have ARC allocations. This week, ARC allocated $2,500 to non USAC entities. Does, does anyone have any comments, questions, or concerns? If not, it's approved. Next up we have TGIF. Uh, TJF is allocating for $1,733.23 to three non-USAC entities and then zero dollars to um, any USAC entities. And then we're still pending decisions for the main fund. So that's just the mini fund week two allocations. All right. If, does anyone have any comments, questions, or concerns? If not, TGIF for this week is approved. Okay, next up, we have um, appointment. First up, we have the transfer student representative position, which we had to fill. Um, so we have Tyra. And let me, where is she? Is she in there? She's been promoted. There we go. All right. Um, okay, Tara, without further ado, uh, you're free to give your opening statement. Okay, so good evening, everyone. My name 
Ms. Tyra Cobbs. I am a second year transfer student here at UCLA studying African American Studies and History. I have associate's degrees in African American Studies and Psychology from Los Madonna's College, Contra Costa College, Foothill College, and De Anza in Northern California. In community college, I was a participant in the Most Scholars Program, which is a cultural-based program for Black students. I was also the president of my associated students. Here at UCLA, I am a McNair Scholar researching Afrocentric psychological interventions for Black Bruins. I am also the ASU Transfer Coordinator, working specifically with Black transfer populations. I am also a student programmer at the Black Bruin Resource Center with a particular focus on transfer students. Um, I have worked as the Mentorship Program Coordinator for the Transfer Student Center working to ensure that incoming transfers are matched to transfer mentors and that the mentors do not have any burnout and that they're able to give resources onto their mentees. Um, I've also served as a mentorship, the membership coordinator for the Emoja Club here at UCLA. Um, and I'm currently the committee chair for the Black Bruin Transfer Extravaganza in which I am working to collaborate with Mecha to have the first ever Black and Brown Transfer Day for the Black and Brown at Mid Weekends. Um, and so I am very happy to be here, and I'm glad that you all are giving me this platform to apply for this position. All right, thank you. All right, now we'll open the floor for questions from council members. Uh, Juan. Thank you so much for joining um, us at, meeting, at our council meeting today, and thank you so much for your interest in, in the transfer student position. Um, I'm so excited to hear your response. and. Um, already all of your friends who came for public comment um, really, um, really said a lot and to to both your character and your readiness for this position. Um, I, my question for you um, is so for like us, when we went, we ran for, for council, we had the opportunity to talk about kind of our platforms and what we wanted to achieve um, when, when selected. Um, so I would like to give you kind of like the space to maybe talk about um, the priorities that you see um, in the transfer student community here at UCLA and, and how you would work to um, in your office um, if elected, um, appointed tonight to um, solve these issues. With my appointment, I think my biggest goal will to be to definitely merge the different cultural transfers um, and also like the distinct transfer populations. I've noticed there's different events for like black POC transfers, system impacted transfers, international transfers, um, parenting transfers, veteran transfers. So I really want to work to bridge the gap between all these different identities to have a unified transfer population because we are already a marginalized community at UCLA really doesn't make sense for us to be separated when we all have the same goal. We're here for two years, some maybe more, but we have very short time to really be successful in a place where we weren't originally welcome. So I really want to bridge these communities and make sure that we all succeed and that we're all able to be retained at the, the institution. Um, additionally, I have a particular focus on mental health initiatives. I believe that transfer students have their own psychology. We are a different type of student. We have a different cultural wealth that we bring to UCLA, but that is definitely overlooked by the institution and by different, different community partners as well, um, which I think the transfer center has been pivotal in and like highlighting those different cultural wealths that we bring, but understanding how the transfer experience looks different from a psychological perspective. Um, when we come into the institution, we really don't know what to expect. Community college is a much smaller, micro level institution, whereas we come to this big public university and it's like more students, there's more things to get involved with. We don't really know how to, to, to deal with it. Uh, a lot of us experience imposter syndrome, which my myself included, I didn't, didn't think that I belonged at UCLA. We experience transfer shock. Um, we also have higher levels of depression and anxiety. And so with my platform, I hope to bring light to these issues, to partner more with CAPS and the transfer sitting to basically spotlight the, the different mental health issues that transfer students face when they come here. Um, I also think that transfer students, especially those who aren't from the LA area, have a harder time acclimating to the UCLA camp, campus climate because there aren't really any opportunities for us to engage with UCLA and beyond. So I really hope to bring the idea of a transfer mob day, uh, probably in collaboration with the Transfer Student Center to bring UCLA students across the different hotspots across LA so that we can understand where we are and how we fit into this community and what we can bring to UCLA and Los Angeles at large. Um, and so those are a few things that I envision for my platform as a TSR rep. 
Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other council members got questions? Eliana. Uh, thanks. So yeah, first of all, never seen this level of community support for an appointment before. And we've had a lot of amazing appointments. So very impressed. Thanks for being here. But I think my question is Simone and the great comment she was making was mentioning about you being like representing empowerment and student run. So could you talk a bit about what those ideas mean to you and how you want to promote them as like a transfer student representative? Yes, so as a transfer student, I have really engaged with different communities. And in my own personal experiences, I feel like being a freshman admit kind of holds more weight at UCLA. So as a transfer student, when I'm engaging with other transfers, it doesn't matter like what population they're from, where they're from. Um, I really want to empower transfer students to understand that we bring like a significant amount of cultural wealth to the institution and that, you know, we have transfer pride, transfers were in UCLA. So I really try to empower students to believe in themselves, um, to not have that imposter syndrome, to believe that they can be successful, even though we are a marginalized population here at UCLA. So whether that's just me giving resources off to students or me, um, you know, offering students to come help me with different projects that I'm working on, I really hope to empower students to be the best, the best, um, the best ability or like the best version of themselves. Um, I also think it's important to empower transfer students through like helping them engage with, in spaces that they're not usually in. So like, I guess a specific example of that would be in the Greek, like in the Greek orgs, a lot of transfers come in and they don't understand how to get initiated with Greek orgs. Um, so how can we empower transfer students to be in those spaces so that they can be successful and, you know, pass on the baton. Um, so really empowering one transfer student. And so it gets bigger and you can empower 30 through that one transfer student. Um, so just reaching different transfers and having them understand that even though they're at this big institution, we're not used to this space, we can be successful here despite our identity as transfer students. And maybe even being a transfer student makes us more, more successful, more able to be successful here at UCLA. Love that. Thank you so much. All right. Um, any more questions? We got one more question if anyone wants to ask. All right, uh, Sarah. Um, hi, Tara. Thank you so much um, for coming out um, and speaking to council. Uh, I just wanted to echo what all the other council members said, um, just because it was really amazing to hear all the wonderful things people had to say. Um, so I guess my question was um, sort of what I guess I'm trying to I'm trying to think how to phrase it. What um, based on the past transfer, how do you hope to like emulate um, what he what uh, Teddy did, and what do you hope to change um, in the tenure? In your tenure, I think the past TSR reps have done amazing jobs in connecting with different community partners. I think working as a TSR in my position, I hope to really bridge on that cultural that intercultural communication. I think that's something that the TSR needs to improve on. I still see a large amount of disunity in the transfer population, and it's hard for different communities to kind of um, work with one another. And it's not even just transfers. I think it's different ethnic groups at UCLA in general, but particularly I think it's more important for transfer students because we are such a small community. So I think that that would be the biggest thing that I would change. Um, and I'm already trying to start this work, even with me collaborating with ASU and Mecha for the Black and Brown Transfer Day for the Admit Weekend. I'm currently working with Melissa at Seoul to actualize this vision. And I hope to have other events like this in the future and to create a culture where we don't have to say, well, you're a Black transfer, you're an Asian transfer, you're a Latinx transfer. So we can have like all transfers together, have a global transfer day. Um, and so that would really be my vision in terms of changing the TSR representative position. Thank you so much. Okay, um, Tari, uh, you're now free to give your closing statement. So once again, I just wanna thank you all for giving me this platform. As a black student transfer, I am really happy to be here. I am marginalized in two different ways, but specifically as a transfer student, I hope to come into this position with a strong, understanding of what it means to be a transfer and how I can support the transfer community here at UCLA. 
And I hope that you all will help me to help the transfer community um, by appointing me to this position. And once again, thank you for having me here. And I hope that you guys vote me into the position. Thank you so much for coming. All right, next up we have ARC's recommendation. ARC voted two to zero to one on Tyra. Okay, does anyone from ARC wanna to speak to that? Okay. Um, next up, we'll just open the floor for questions or uh, I, I just um, a discussion amongst council members. Does anyone have anything they wanna say or comment or anything like that regarding this appointment? Alicia? I just wanna say thank you so much for stepping up and for, I don't know, for coming into this space. Um, and for being that representative for transfer students. I think because it's a relatively new office and you know the previous TSR like did not have enough support, I just want to welcome you to this space and say that if you ever need anything, you can come to me. Um, and I will support you to the best of my ability with navigating the space because while we all come into this having ideas and you know a passion and half the job is figuring out what to do and how to do it and navigating the space so i just want to say thank you for coming and i hope um i hope you're elected thank you so much devon yeah just to piggyback what alicia said um thank you for having the courage to not only come tonight but to take on this position, especially halfway in. It's already a difficult position being a transfer and not and having to acclimate later on than other um normal, not normal, but other student for your students. Um, so thank you for being able to do that and taking on that responsibility. Um, I'm very, very confident. I don't know you very well personally, um, but I'm very, very confident based off of what I've heard tonight that you will do exceptionally well. And similar to Alicia said, um, we are here for you in every regards, whether um, you need to grab coffee or anything like that to support you and make sure that um, you have the resources at hand available for you to thrive in this position. Um, so please reach out and we will also be reaching out to you. And yeah, congratulations, pre-congratulations. Juan? I have a comment after a quick question. Wait, are we going to listen to other transfer student candidates or is Tyra the only one? Yeah, this is the only, this is the appointment that I uh, I chose. Amazing. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, I am so excited. Um, I I really want to stress this kind of um, this common um, theme of you of, of of what I heard in, in your um, kind of like approach to um, providing service to transfer students on campus, which is building bridges and partnerships with um, and collaborations with other um, resources and student uh, groups on campus. Um, and that solidarity and that community work is so pivotal. And it's something that I believe um, some of our offices are, um, here are already trying to work on, um, but you're working on it outside and, and bringing it to this role um, is going to be really important and really meaningful. So I'm so excited. I'm so um, energized. It's, I'm so happy. Okay, that's it. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um... Does anyone else have, well, if no one else has anything, uh, can we get a motion? I move to approve um, Tyra Cobbs as the transfer student representative. Um, I second. Okay. One motions, Naomi seconds. All in favor, please raise your hand. All right, and by a vote of 12 to zero to zero, uh, the motion passes and Tyra, you're now the transfer uh, student representative. Congratulations. All right, uh, I don't know how this works. Like the, I mean, you, does she, she immediately like starts in the role, like, right? Is that how it works, Jessica? 
Um, yeah, so Tyra, um, I'll connect with you offline if you can um, uh, direct message me your email um, to get you your hiring paperwork. And then um, what we can do is we can have a member of JBoard come to the next council meeting to swear you in at the beginning. Um, but yeah, those are like the two main, uh, you know, paperwork pieces we can get through. And then um, we can also happy to meet to kind of onboard you and get you access to your office and, and all of that stuff. So congratulations. And um, yeah, look forward to working with you. Awesome. All right. Moving forward, next up, we have a, an appointment for the Elections Board Director of External Relations. So Nicholas. Has Nicholas been promoted? I see a hand raised. Can we promote Nicholas, please? I think, um, would that be like the IVP proxy that has to promote Nicholas? Like who, who has pro uh, promoting powers currently? There we go. I, can, I did it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just give me a heads up if you need me to promote. Anybody. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, Nicholas, uh, you are free to give your opening statement. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Nicholas Pui. I'm a, oh, my pronouns are he, him. I'm a second year political science major here at UCLA, and I'm applying for the position of external relations director. Uh, I believe I deserve the position because I'm coming in with ideas that previously the elections board hasn't really tapped into. And I've kind of labeled a three pronged plan consisting of media outreach, voter incentive, and really generating newfound campus connections. Uh, under voter incentive, I'd like to bring about the idea of a scholarship. Under media outreach, I'd like to bring out about the idea of the external relations department of elections board having their own Instagram and under um, generating more, more campus cooperation, we're we really tapping into some other organizations that we haven't really tapped into as much as we should have before. All right, thank you, Nicholas. Uh, now we'll open the floor for questions from council members. Does anyone have any questions? Alicia. Hi, thank you so much for coming. Um, I just wanted to ask if you could detail what the scholarship would look like and how it would be an initiative to um, promote like the voter turnout and stuff like that. I'd appreciate it, thank you. Yeah, of course. So um, to get some subtle background, I am, a, I am the current chair of scholarship for IFC, so I, Overall, I know about the general good that a scholarship can bring about. It's a net positive in my eyes. I mean, a scholarship for a great cause, you know, good monetary um, feedback for students is just a general great idea, in my opinion. So the way I would organize it specifically is I would ask the voter, it'd only be eligible to voters, and I essentially ask them, what did you vote for? Why did you vote for them? And what other policies or changes would you like to see at UCLA that some candidates or the school as a whole hasn't really touched upon. And then the method of payment could be in the form of UCLA store gift card. Um, this could be a monetary relief for some students. They could spend it on groceries, textbooks, school supplies at UCLA store. So that's typically how I envision it in my head. Uh, Juan? Thank you so much for joining us um, today. I wanted to give you um, the platform to talk about kind of like your um, leadership experiences or other professional, um, like your professional background um, and how maybe that has prepared you and set you up for success for maybe taking on this role. Mm -hmm. So as I previously mentioned, I was appointed to IFC last year as a freshman, as the VP of programming. Um, and essentially as VP of programming, all I did was just I just plan and coordinated events, all, I, I guess, IFC oriented events. So let's say it was new member orientation, fundraising, you know, stuff along that line. So I have a general gist of how the school works in terms of planning venues, getting together organizations and getting general cooperation across campus. Beyond that, I'm a current legal attorney or not legal intern 
for a, an attorney office in Encino, California. And that taught me a lot of regards of planning, you know, putting together whole schedules and working with multiple people's calendars is that was what I was doing for five different attorneys. Um, beyond that, I'm currently doing research for a professor, Dr. Jennifer Wagon, actually, of the School of Public Health. And I'm doing research regarding sexual assault and sexual violence and prohibiting that within a college um, sphere. So I got to talk to a lot of different groups that necessarily wouldn't have the voice that they would necessarily have within public or around campus on a one-to-one -one basis. So I have a very firm experience upon talking more marginalized and not in quite discrete groups. Okay. Uh, we have one more question. Does anyone want to ask another question? Going once, going twice. All right, if not, Nicholas, you are free to give your closing statement. Uh, thank you all for your time tonight. Again, I'd like to reiterate my heavy emphasis on generating further media outreach, voter incentive, and generating more campus connections. Uh, hope you guys resonate with my ideas, and thank you again for your time. Uh, hope you have a great night. Thank you for coming. Okay. Uh, all right. Can we have the, hear y'all the record? ARC voted uh, Nicholas with a three to zero to zero vote. Okay. And now we'll open the floor for questions from council members or any questions, concerns, or comments. Uh, you know, we're going to have a discussion. Does anyone have anything they want to bring up regarding this appointment? Going once, going twice. All right. Can we get a motion? Yeah, move to approve Nicholas as election board external relations chair. I second. Okay, Eliana motions. Sarah seconds. All in favor, please raise your hand. All right. Uh, can everyone lower their hands? All abstaining, please raise your hand. All against, please raise your hand. Okay, we had one, we had someone didn't vote. Um, okay, by a vote of 12 to zero to zero, the motion passes and Nicholas is now the uh, elections board director of external relations, congratulations. Thank you all. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. Next up, we have a appointment for finance committee. Uh, I hope I pronounced this correctly. I think it's uh, pronounced um, Irish. Have we promoted Irish yet? Okay. Wait, where is Irish? Okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, hey, how hey, how you doing? Um, you're free to give your opening statement. Good evening, Council. My name is Iris, pronouns she, her, hers. I'm a second year economics major. A little background for I'm here today, applying for the position of finance committee associate. I was in a daily burn last quarter, and to maintain the integrity of both parties, if appointed, I will no longer pre be participating in investigations where I worked on a months long investigation that brought into question the allocations of student government, a lack of transparency that goes into those decisions and how well, and how well they fit into policies. I led the budget analysis portion of the investigation where I found the greatest resource to be the USAC encumbrance budget and descriptions of fund grants. I analyzed and created visuals of these allocations and I also compared surpluses over the years. I also interviewed professors about the standards of deciding which clubs to receive funding and receive suggestions of the ideal methods of allocations and oversights. And I today bring this genuine dedication to maintain thorough tracking of the budgets for transparency and to conduct thorough research to best allocate funds to student orgs and events in accordance to USAC guidelines. Okay, awesome. Thank you. 
All right, now we'll open the floor for questions from council members. Um, do council members have any questions? Please raise your hand. Sarah. Hi, Iris. Thank you so much for um, coming um, to council. Um, my question is, I guess a big part of my role um, is um, involved in just like financial transparency. So in this position, how do you hope to promote that? And then also, in addition, what are some other goals that you hope to accomplish in the role? Of course. Thank you for asking. So there is a, gen I must say, there is a general public concern for this lack of just inaccessibility of information within student government financing in general. And there are, have been concerns brought up by external sources for there being not enough updated websites, clubs being denied with insufficient explanations. And overall, again, I'm committed to maintaining financial, financial transparency. And I think this is best done by setting a schedule to record, to organize, and to share transactions in these allocations if requested and doing this on a consistent basis. And um, I guess another thing that I will bring to the table is, um, as I previously mentioned, from my months on experiences of um, investigating club policies and ballot languages and just interviewing experts in the field, I have developed a deep understanding of why and to how and why to carefully consider club policies and these actions when reviewing these financial requests. So um, overall, I'm confident in my abilities to research the most efficient allocations to further benefit our community that are in line with um, USAC and contingency guidelines. And we, overall, I want to make sure that student orgs have statements of non-discrimination, they promote diversity, they help marginalized communities and other objectives. Thank you so much. That was a great answer. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. All right. Uh, uh, you're free to give your closing statement. Of course. So something I have not touched upon is that in terms of the technical side of managing finances, I'm also the finance director of UCLA's Pre-Law Society, and I have managed all financial matters of the PLS. As we have over 600 members, I have experiencing and managing the finances of a semi-large organization, and I hope to strive to expand my skill sets at managing finances of a much larger organization on FICOM. And I also like to mention my dedication to equality and equality within um, the organization, and that I believe that all organizations and club allocations should be done with neutrality and without biases. But I also believe that, and I will strive to make sure that allocations will be made with a goal to prioritize community service and providing services to disadvantaged groups and ensuring academic um, success of students. And um, along with my technical and uh, personal passions, I'm dedicated to maintaining transparency and researching the best allocations of funds to um, student orgs and events. And um, well, thank you for having me here tonight, Council. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. All right, now we'll hear ARC's recommend, uh, recommendation. ARC voted zero to zero to three on IRIS. Okay. Zero you said zero to zero to three? Yes. Okay. Does anyone from ARC wanna uh, speak to that? Okay, okay. So um we did have a couple notes. Um I will say as it's amazing to hear how you use the feedback that we gave from the ARC interview and really came to the plate today. I really do appreciate that. I love when people actually take the feedback, feedback that they receive and implement it. Um, so our main concern during the ARC interview is that um, you didn't quite understand the scope of the questions that we were asking. Um, unfortunately, I felt and the ARC members felt as well that the answers were very vague in a sense and uh, what you wanted to do. Um, but tonight you did really showcase um, better responses and like highlighting different things that you want to tackle. Um, in addition, you primarily focused on in the ARC interview on um, publishing a budget analysis um, for FICON and Particularly, you highlighted that in every of your all of your answers, um, which really hindered um, like getting to the rest of it, like talking about equity. Um, and tonight, um, even saying like equality without biases, 
I would just like to say for everyone on Zoom, equity is leveling the paying field. So we know certain clubs get money each year and get funding each year. What can we do for the clubs that aren't getting as much funds? So thinking about things like that, just a little tidbit that I want to add. Um, yeah, like we said, a lot of some of the answers were vague. Um, and you did get to mention tonight um, the um, student group that you are work with finance in for the director. That was also a question that um, we had had. We were like, oh, you mentioned this club that you work with. We're like, how many members? Because it could be a club that only has like, say, 15 members. And then we're like, oh, OK, like, are you really ready for this role? But now you mentioned like 600 members. Like, that's a huge responsibility. And I really want you to highlight that in your resume, like really like you've, you're doing the work in a role. I really just want you to showcase what you've done and the work that you'll continue to do. And thank you again. I just want to say for like coming tonight and really like showing like you, what you want to do and what you've done in the past. And I really appreciate it. Okay. Does anyone else from ARC want to speak or? Okay. If not, we'll open up the floor for discussion amongst council members. Does any council member have any questions, concerns, or comments that they want to do regarding this appointment? All right, going once, going twice. Okay, can we get a motion? I move to appoint Iris to the uh, Finance Committee. Second. Sarah, motion one, seconds. All in favor, please raise your hand. All right, and by a vote of 13 to zero to zero, the motion passes and Irish is now on the finance committee. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all and thank you ARC for the feedback. Awesome. All right, uh, congratulations again. Um, next up, we have the John Wooden Board of Governors. These are consent items. Uh, we have Lucas, Stephen, and David that are being appointed. Does anyone have any questions, concerns, or comments or want, want to bring up anything regarding these appointments? Okay, and then they then those appointments are approved. All right, next up we have an appointment for the Student Activity Center Board of Governors. Does anyone have any questions, concerns, or comments they want to bring up regarding this appointment? Uh, yeah, Devon. Um, Phoebe was the one who appointed this one, right? Yes, that's right. Um, I just have a quick question um obviously i completely trust your process and what you went through the interview process um given i'm trying to be as transparent without being too overly um given the history that we as council have with um the person you appointed do you fully believe and trust that they are capable of doing this role to the full extent um that they can especially given um the the speak the speech that was given today as well with the overwhelming amount of work that they have on their table right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I did think that this would possibly come up today. So um, I would say that, well, one, just like for transparency for me, I've been struggling to fill the Student Activity Center Board of Governors. I got an email from Mick DeLuca mid quarter last year or last quarter. Um, saying that Zach Bog has not been able to meet because we don't have its SIOC appointment. And SIOC did choose Jeffrey. So I believe in their, you know, power and say over who they want to appoint to Zach Bog, given that it's supposed to come from that space anyway. And Jeffrey has served on Zach Bog before. And I know that he knows the seriousness of, you know, the Student Activity Center space to a lot of different groups on campus, especially the MOs. So I think he's going to do well in this position. I think it fits him well. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that was the only question. Again, I wasn't questioning you or the boards. Um, I just wanted to make sure that um, the role is properly um, attended to and given. Alicia? I just want to say in response to that, um, that I think not just in this scenario, but I don't appreciate that people want to speak on Jeffrey's capacity um, and want to speak on his behalf, knowing that he's very, very involved as a student leader on so many spectrums of UCLA. Um, and I just don't think it's right that repeatedly when he is continuously trying to do work that people want to speak on his capacity for him. 
um especially when he's not here um so yeah thank you phoebe yeah devon just to quickly, I'm not trying to start a conversation or even argument at all. Um, no way am I trying to downplay or dis disrespect anyone, especially when they are not present and being able to hold themselves accountable or hold them or speak um, on what I'm saying. I just, I it was a question and it's open conversation for questions. So that's why I was asking Phoebe. Um, I didn't say he is not able to do it. I was seriously asking that question and in no way did I mean to introduce disrespect to him um, or the capacities that uh, Jeffrey can do. Um, I just want to say, you know, I kind of have a problem with disappointment. Um, you know, I understand that like, oh, you know, we shouldn't, I mean, I guess question people's capacity, but it's a very valid question when we have organizations that are saying that a fund that he's been in charge of already, like have sent five emails and he hasn't responded to them. So if he can't do good in that position, now we're adding something else to his plate. Like that doesn't, I mean, that that's a very valid argument to bring up of maybe he's too involved. Maybe he's in too many positions right now, or maybe he's just, you know, ha having like a huge workload. And I understand like, yeah, Jeffrey is very involved. He's in a lot of, you know, organizations. Um, but I don't see like that. It's a very valid point to bring up that someone who's already had a complaint about them, about, you know, being unresponsive, adding them to another organization where that same thing is probably going to happen. So I think like with that, I think we can like put this up for a vote. Um, if he passes, obviously, you know, he's in the position, but, you know, just the, just for future reference, you know, the, the whole argument of, I just have a lot going on when you're actively seeking to put yourself in more and more positions is going to get played out like real fast. So um, does anyone else have anything they want to add to this? Yeah, I'm going to just add something re uh, real quick. I, I do believe like the concern right now is whether or not there is going to be like presence, I guess. But I just want to let you know that the committee itself cannot function without like like he is the one who stepped up so I just want to really emphasize that that like if we do decide if people decide not to vote Jeffrey in today we're gonna need to get somebody else quick so I would appreciate people's support with that if that ends up happening uh Eliana uh, I just want to highlight there seems to be like a bit of a systematic problem here I mean like here Jeffrey was the only person for ARC, which is crazy. That's a huge position. And naturally, it's hard to get out enough responses with that. And then here he is with, here we've been waiting. We're like into, well into winter quarter. And we have, we, we're struggling to find someone for SAC fog. So at some point, we should probably see what in the world, like, all I think, I definitely think Jeffrey is someone who has Phoebe's confidence and SOC's confidence should be confirmed, but also at some point we should see why in the world there aren't enough people to fill positions that are necessary for this proper service of the student body. Maybe we can put that on or include that under today's agenda item. We've already voted on the agenda item, so we can, uh, I mean, we can discuss that offline if you want. Uh, Nick, uh, Alicia? I want to respond to what you said um, and reiterate the fact that you cannot speak on someone else's capacity um, and involvement. Maybe those are shoes that a lot of other people can't fill, but he can. And you cannot blame ARC's inefficiency to work this, this school year on one person when that one person has no support to run it, has not received support to run it, and um, has done everything they can to try to help the situation from our end but until we get administrative and council support nothing can move and i hope to be discussing that later this council but i just want to say that and it's very inappropriate to speak on someone else's capacity um when you're not in their shoes 
Daniela? Yeah, I just want to make apparent like something that I'm noticing is going on in this space right now that I personally take issue with. I feel like a lot of people partake in this conversation have acknowledged what Alicia mentioned initially about how we cannot speak on anyone's capacity. And yet, I think we're continuing to shift in that direction simply by suggesting that it's appropriate for us to shift this into a voting matter without Jeffrey being in the room. I think that if this is a valid concern, first of all, this agenda item has been on here since Friday at 5 p.m. So I feel like if those were concerns that would receive a lot more value with Jeffrey's input, we had enough time to raise those questions in order to get his insight as well as Phoebe's. In addition to that, I feel like if it is going to move into a vote ultimately, then it'd be more appropriate to give enough time for Jeffrey to understand um, that this is how council is feeling so that he can be present at a meeting where that vote would happen. Naomi? Okay, so I'm praying to the gods that's on response. How often does this thing meet is my question. If anybody has an answer. Like if they haven't been meeting, like when were they supposed to start meeting? How many meetings do they have to catch up on? How many meetings are there for the future? Like once a quarter, perfect. For like a one hour meeting, once a quarter, if you can't make that, then I don't know what to tell you, but I think once a quarter is not a huge commitment. That's what I just want to say. Um, besides that, seconding what Danny said and Alicia. Um, and yeah, I'm done for tonight. I just have a quick question about how this works. If it's a consent item and someone doesn't consent, does it go to a vote? Just pure bylaws questions, if anyone knows. Um, I think it does, but I know someone brought up a concern that Jeffrey isn't here tonight to speak, um, in regards to this position. So Jessica, what do you recommend? Um, yeah, so I'm trying to look up if that is a Robert's rules of order procedure versus a bylaw procedure, but, um, generally if there is opposition to a consent item, um, that opposition then leads you to take a roll call vote. Um, so that is the process. However, what it sounds like is maybe you want to do more of like an interview, not just a vote. Um, so if the preference of council is like to interview the candidate for the position, then, you know, if you want to put it on the agenda for next week, that's to your discretion. But in general practice, if a consent item has opposition, then it goes to um, and similar to an action item vote. So you can go down the line and everybody can vote yes, no, or abstain. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Phoebe, you know, since this is your appointment, would you be comfortable with tabling this for next week? I mean, personally, I was hoping that we could do this today, so. Okay, so all right, you wanna take it? For, okay, Danielle, you have a question? Um, I also just wanted to point out because I have had consent appointments in the past for SIOC and CRC, and every time that those have gone on the agenda, I've had to send those applications to ARC. ARC has the option to interview or not, so I'd also just kind of like would like to put it out there that if you all will effectively table this for next week, maybe consider also involving ARC in an interview process for Jeffrey and whether ARC has the capacity to do that. Did, did we even ask for ARC's vote yet? No, right? I don't think they, the, the, I don't think they voted. Did they, the ARC, did um, you vote on this? Yes, I believe we did. Let me see really quick. Uh, the vote was three to zero to zero. Her, she's amazing. Um. <laughs> All right, well, we did have individuals that, um, brought up some you know brought up uh, concerns with it so i mean we can just um we can take it up for a vote you know arc voted the way they voted that's fine we can take it up for a vote and obviously 
if the uh, uh, the candidate passes, they're on the position. Um, so yeah, so we'll just you know take it up for a vote. I guess can we get a motion? I move to appoint Jeffrey Umaña Muñoz for the Student Activity Center Board of Governors. I second. So Alicia Moses, Daniela seconds. All in favor, please raise your hand. All right, can, can everyone lower their hands, please? That's eight. All right, um, all abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay, can everyone please lower their hands, please? And then all against, please raise your hand. Oh, well, that's 13, okay, bet. Okay, by a vote of um, eight to five, the motion passes and Jeffrey is now uh, on the Student Activity Center Board of Governors. Okay, moving forward, um, now going into officer reports. So for this, or yeah, last week, uh, so I was able to, okay, so obviously I think everyone pre, uh, knows that, you know, last week I was uh, invited to the White House by the vice president. So while I was there, I was able to uh, have discussions in regards to economic development um, and just the mental health crisis that's currently existing, especially that those within um, the uh, minority groups. Uh, so I was able to talk to her and her staff about that. Uh, I also was able to advocate for the release of the WCLA graduate, uh, Ava Hernandez, who's currently being illegally held in Venezuela. Uh, I would encourage a lot of council members to help out in that campaign to free him. He's been um, held illegally in a prison since I think March or May of last year. Um, we This Saturday, we hosted uh, the president's banquet. So there, it happens every five years. All the living presidents uh, from UCLA student government come in fellowship and you know talk to each other about a lot of stuff uh, so i was able to meet the first black student body president cheryl luke so that was amazing um i had a meeting with vice chancellor gordon also spoke uh spoke to roy from asucla um i do understand that there are some individuals that currently understand the what's going on with the cpo issue what i want to do is create a committee a special committee um, I spoke with a couple of past presidents who's all, who, who've also dealt with the situation um, more recently, including Naomi and uh, Blake, uh, Robert Blake Watson, and, you know, hoping to, to include them on this committee as well, or at least reach out to them for special advice. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be speaking about this pretty soon. Uh, I'm looking to, you know, make something happen in regards to, you know, working out something with CPO and the uh, administrator uh, admin uh, within the next two to three weeks. So um, please join that committee if you have time, if you wanna discuss this. I know a lot of individuals here currently have been working to fix this problem. Um, so thank you for all the groundwork. I wanna make sure we get everybody's voice in there. Uh, we released quarterly reports from fall quarter, had a meeting with my cabinet and my directors. Um, we held an office picnic for my office on Saturday as well. Uh, interviewed candidates for the transfer student rep position. Uh, we released the student body quarterly email, so I, I hope a lot of you got to see that. And then I met with a member of the National Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council. There, well, it's it's a new thing. It's a new um, a new council that's being uh, created. So met with those individuals. So yeah, that's what I did this week. And I see that IVP has a written report. So next up is external vice president. Yeah, so this week, um, this weekend, we attended SOCC, the Students of Color Conference that was held in Davis. Um, it was very fun, very informative. Um, recommend for those that will be here next year to apply. EVP will be funding it then too. Um, also, Student Lobby Conference is coming up, uh, speaking of UCSA, so please also apply to that. Um, this, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this afternoon, I had a meeting with the University Affairs um, UCSA subcommittee. We are planning our meeting with uh, UCOP that's happening on top of February. Our Winter 2023 fellowship began today, which is why I was a little late. I went in to say hi to everyone. 
Um, everyone seems very involved and excited to start. So that's exciting. Our first all staff and exec, not first exec meeting, but our first all staff meeting was yesterday um, and it went really well. And we had our third exec meeting, second exec meeting yesterday as well. Um, we had a lobby meeting with Representative P Padilla for the reintro of the Student Tax Elimination Act. Um, a resolution that passed last week about the heavy rail at UCLA has over 110,000 views on Twitter. So it's getting a lot of local traction, which is great. Um, shout out to everyone that worked on it and everyone that's continuing working on it. Um, speaking of that whole um, ordeal, we're meeting with uh, Vice Chancellor Beck for ad the admin push um, this upcoming week. And there's been just a lot of behind the rail. Yeah, a lot of you guys in council have been helping out. So thank you for that. And shout out to my local director, Evan. Um, it's true, his true passion. If you know, you know. Um, Lobby Corps has uh, been scheduled for February 3rd um, and we are excited for that. And lastly, BAG is due this upcoming Friday. So if you have not applied, please apply. And that is all I have. Awesome, thank you. Uh, next up we have uh, Jim Rep One. How's everyone doing? Okay, so this week I met with the panel letting president to see how my office can help sorority girls in different ways. I met with Jessica to understand more about my budget, how much we have and how to put that budget in different places, how to get a requisite form and all that stuff. I met with Josh from FICOM to better understand contingency funding and how to show clubs what to apply for, how to apply for stuff. On Monday, I met with the someone from Lyft who has been helping me get the free Lyft rides. So we were talking about how the last program worked really well and how we're going to continue it. So that's going to come. We're going to tweak it to even make it better, make it longer or period of time. So I just applied for contingency funding that got applied, that got approved today for $1,400. So that's all going to go straight to those lift rides, and it's going to give a lot more students the availability and accessibility to ride around campus for uh, and ride around campus safer. I contacted some more clubs, see how better we can help them, and if they wanted to be highlighted on the Instagram account. And I also hired a couple more directors this week. Thank you, guys. All right, next up we have Jim Rep Three. Hi, lovely people. So first of all, been working to resolve the whole situation with the CPO mistreating students and shout out to Simone Anderson, Ryan Factora, and Alicia Verdugo for working with me on this. Appreciate it. And also to whoever been saying, whoever came up with the idea that USAC might lose control over our budget. If we don't release these checks, I don't like being threatened. Please stop it. It has opposite effect of what you think. But anyhow, looks like we're getting somewhere on this. So what else? Thanks, Naomi. I met with Lauren. Thanks, Divine. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate the support. So I met with, shout out to Teresa. Let me try and get her name right. If she's gonna help me, the least I can do is get her name right. Teresa Steva Dukes and Laura Fettig from Rye Center for setting up. We have an event plan tentatively for February 16th, 4.30, I think starting like 4.30, 5 p.m. We are gonna be talking about like internet addiction, excessive internet use, like doesn't have to be medically an addiction, just excessive use and how it hurts a lot of us and how we can support each other and improve our habits and overcome this so I am very excited about that and shout out to Rye Center again mm, what else been going on I'm working with Hillel which for folks who aren't familiar is basically like one of the big Jewish community centers at UCLA on a series event series on disability so if any of you are interested we're going to be looking at disability disability rights disability justice in the Jewish community but also in like every all sorts of religions and communities and minorities. So if anyone's interested, please message me. I'm very excited about this. We're trying to have like speakers, set up a student group, stuff like that. Mm. Ah, and there's a whole another UCLA has not learned anything. 
administrators, I mean, not the rest of y'all, and are doing unfair labor practices again towards the people at teachers at UCLA Lab School. So I'll send this around both like in the Slack and under the YouTube for our lovely watchers and everyone please support the teachers. Love you all, have a great night. All right, next up, Academic Affairs Commissioner. Hi folks, so just super quickly, I wanted to issue an update for all of you about what I mentioned during week one in regards to the new report grades. So there was a letter that was sent out on my behalf through the end of the executive director on the Center for College Academic Advising. Um, basically, the process that we're gonna undergo now has shifted from what I mentioned during week one. Um, good news is that as of the 18th last week, um, I think some around like over 90 to 98% of students had already received updated grades um, if they previously had no reports. So that number is going down over time. But again, in the case that students still haven't received any updates, they're encouraged to reach out to their instructors. But if they face any um, challenges in doing so, or getting responses in a timely manner, again, please urge them to reach out to an academic advisor now instead of AAC. Um, but I believe that the Center for College Academic Advising will also be reaching out to students directly if it ends up being a, a consistent issue. But yeah, let me know if y'all have any questions or if other students reach out to you all with questions and I can also facilitate that connection with Corey, who is the director. Thank you. All right, uh, Campus Events commission Commissioner. Hi, um, excuse my voice, guys. I usually do written, you probably should have done that again, but um, I just wanna like update on some stuff we've been doing. Um, a lot of the work this year has been like doing structure for campus events. Um, COVID really threw a lot of things over, as you guys all know. Um, and so just like a lot of that, but we do have some fun events coming up. There's a lot of events in February and early March. Um, just some ones I want to shout out is we're looking for some vendors for our um, event in collaboration with NSA on February 11th. It's called AfroFest, and we're just looking for some vendors that would like to participate. I think we've had a couple submissions, but always want some more. You guys should come. It's on the Royce like Terrace, which should be really cool. Um, and I think it's from like 12 to 5. Um, we also have a noon show on Bruin Plaza with um, some of them are alumni and some of them are current students called Flamingo Bay. Um, so if you're walking to class around then, like go check them out and we'll have another one the following week as well on February 6th. Um, we have some really cool speaker events coming up, like a sex workers panel with some sex toys giveaways. Um, on February 24th, we'll have another speaker that'll be announced soon, which is really special. Um, and then March 1st, we're having in a panel um, with Iran the Iranian American Women Foundation. Um, so you guys should all keep an eye on for all of this stuff. A lot of stuff to come. Um, we've also been meeting with our advisor, Chris and Nick DeLuca to work on like reestablishing relationships with publicist firms um, because we've been really struggling in the speaker aspect. Um, so that's just something and kind of towards working that speakers thing is uh, we've been meeting with David Myers about the dialogue across difference um, thing that's supposed to be happening soon. Um, so just some stuff that we're doing. Um, but yeah, that's all for me. Thanks, guys. All right, next up, we have Cultural Affairs Commissioner. Oh, is... oh sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, Community Service Commissioner. Hi, everyone. Um, so for CSC today, we had um, our nonprofit networking night in collaboration with the UCLA Volunteer Center. Um, so I want to do a special sh shout out to um, our CSC staff that helped um, pull all of this um, together. Um, Alexis Bembry, Clara Chung, Mackenzie Smith, Savannah um, Betty, Elizabeth Lee, and Lucy Wang. Um, I appreciate y'all eternally and all other CSC um, staff who showed up to help um, help the nonprofit networking night. Um, we had an amazing turnout. 
um, it ends in 20 minutes. So it's still ongoing right now. Um, next, uh, we um, received all the applications for Impact Conference and, re and finalized um, and sent out um, acceptance uh, invitations to um, the students. And we're currently actively working to um, book the flights, reserve the rooms, and um, set all that up. Um, we are also preparing to do two um, town halls this um, winter quarter and three in the spring, um, five total town halls, all on a specific um, service subject, um, all leading up to a service conference in the winter quarter. For this, um, we're gonna be doing um, two town halls this quarter, week seven and week nine. Um, dates are still to be confirmed. Um, but the first one, we're going to do it um, in partnership with Swipe Out Hunger, and um, it's going to be on um, basic needs. So I will be outreaching to all of your offices, as well as a bunch of student orgs um, in support, in collaboration with my outreach directors um, and my project support director, program support directors um, for all of that. Um, amazing things are on their way from CFC. Um, also, this uh, at the end of this quarter, I just want to like um, do a little save the date. Um, we're gonna be soon announcing the um, Michael, the Robert S. Michaels Service Award, which is a um, fifteen hundred dollar um, scholarship and a two hundred fifty dollar um, award to a community service organization of the recipients scholarship recipients choosing. Um, so yeah, be on the lookout um, for that. Final update, we extended our fellowship application um, to the end of this week. Um, we wanted, we got um, some additional interest past the deadline. So we wanted to um, open it up to any additional students who wanted to be considered for um, our CSC fellowship for this, um, these next two quarters. So um, with that, I will conclude and pass it off to the next person. All right. Uh, yeah. Next. Thank you. Next up. Next up, we have Cultural Affairs Commissioner. Hi, everyone. Um, so for my updates this week, um, we have um, a Made with Love craft fair by the Art Series this Thursday from ten to three, on Bruin Plaza. Um, and come support fellow artists of color. Um, with like there'll be jewelry, there'll be um, crochet, there'll be clothes and other items um, made with love. And um, we're gonna go to the fire marshal to get that approved tomorrow because last week he had an emergency, so he wasn't in his office. Um, and in, for the rest of January, there won't be a word on Wednesday tomorrow, but there'll be a word on Wednesday the week after. Uh, so next Wednesday, 7 p.m. in the art gallery. Um, Next, um, I think on January 30th, we'll have a our first concert of the year. It had to be postponed again because of the artists. Um, but yes, we'll have our winter concert um, on the 30th in Kirkhoff, I think the art gallery, if not the Grand Salon. But there will be hot chocolate, the pajamas. It'll be like a very winter theme. Yes, Coastal Desires will be there. I will also be there. I also sell jewelry. Um, and yeah, and then um, next up for February, we have an HHC month of programming for Hip Hop Appreciation Month. Um, and um, I'll give more information on dates and future events. But for now, I'll feed you with the fact that we have kickoff on February 7th for in Plaza. Um, that'll be very fun. So yeah, it'll be the start to a, a whole, not just month, there'll be more programming in the future. Um, but yeah, it'll be the start to it all. Um, next, um, Jazz Reggae Fest also um, released their call for vendors. So if you would like to follow Jazz Reggae Fest on Instagram, um, it is a student. It is the largest student run festival in the whole country. So I will say that. Yes, Jazz Reggae. Um, so yeah, go follow and share if you like. And then um, I also just, we just, we obviously are processing applications from our winter round of hiring. And we did get some seats filled for 
some directors to get co-directors like for World Fest and for the Word on Wednesday. So that'll be really exciting for some of my directors to get some support um, and balance. And then uh, we had our retreat this past weekend and it was very successful. Um, other than that, we had our general body meet, our first general body meeting of the quarter yesterday. Um, also very successful, more people in CAC getting to know each other. Um, and then, um, and then yeah, working with Eliana on um, multiple things, but we'll be meeting um, to figure out the COVID resolution we'll have um, by next meeting. So that'll be very exciting. And um, <laughs> I'm just figuring out if there's anything else. That I oh uh, yeah just finishing contracting with um honorariums for um HHC um performers for explosion and fashion show and finishing up those adventure registrations um and then obviously for arc um I have a lot prepared for the discussion we'll have so I'll keep it short and sweet for now but thank you everyone. Uh, okay, F facilities commissioner. Hey guys, um, okay, let me see what have we been up to. So I met with Ariella from Carl's office. We're still like trying to draft out some ideas for this sustainability event that she wants during week seven in Ackerman Grand Ballroom. It'll just be kind of like a networking type event uh, discussing sustainability with the larger UCLA community, like bringing in a bunch of stakeholders to like draft out what's happening next with the sustainability plan. Um, and then I met with Evan from Divine's office. Love Evan, he's so great. Um, and we talked a little bit about Westwood Connected and how that can support and potentially drafting out a presentation to present to the Campus Bike Advisory Committee just to get more stakeholders on and in the stamp of approval of Westwood Street improvements. Um, what else are we doing? Oh, our fellowship application closed last week. So thanks, y'all, if y'all plugged it. Um, and then we also got a bunch of new staffers. Got like around seven people joining our transportation committee, I think with like all of the STC stuff and everything people are joining up, which is really cool. Uh, for the Green Initiative Fund on the website, we now have a TGF token section under apply for funding. So now students can find more information on how to get student funding for their work. Um, and then our, for Brune Bazaar, we have our clothing swaps during week eight, and we might do a collaboration with Zero Waste during week six, but we're no longer doing an event during week four. Um, Sorry, I'm just like scrolling through, still working on the UCLA mobile app sustainability update, still getting that process through the reusable dining wear program and the mug program, um, still working with the buyer values committee um, and wanting to connect with ASUCLA board of directors to talk about ethical labor and licensing. And I think there's a survey being sent around to different student org leaders to see their willingness to buy like ethical sourced clothing. Um, and then our building or space committee has been growing a lot recently too. So they have some projects. Last quarter, they did the, the menstrual sticker change. So instead of saying feminine products, all of these stickers in the bathroom say menstrual products. Uh, but they're also working on trying to get the second floor of IRL. There's an outdoor space. They wanna do space activation for that to make it a study space. Uh, they're checking out the gender neutral restroom that's multi stalled at the bottom of Kaplan, seeing what people's opinions are, trying to gather more people to have support for more multi stalled gender neutral restrooms on campus and trying to figure out how to implement that. Um, and then, and then access on board that project is doing pretty well now our staffers are getting connected to DCP um, and they're doing a accessible restroom inventory. Um, and hopefully they'll start going out to campus soon to collect that information. And uh, that's all for me for now. Okay, uh, Financial Supports Commissioner. Hi, everyone. Um, so here, let me turn on my video. Um, for what we've been doing in FSC is we have made a New York Times survey. We're setting up appointments with admin. I actually should follow up on that um, because I sent out some emails. Um, we have another workshop this week on taxes. Um, thank you, Eliana. I always I always love reading your comments. Um, but we have another workshop this week on taxes in the BBRC. Um, please um, 
show up or like just post on your Instagrams. It's ongoing because I don't know how to do my taxes. Um, we are coming out with a resolution, I think, next week. Um, if we can like make sure it's polished in time. Um, and then we are still this week, we're going to start doing promotional like stu student discounts um, on our Instagram. We have a meeting on, I think it's Thursday, to try to increase the price of the meal tickets. So we will see if they listen to me just because costs of uh, dining has gone up. So I feel like that should go up too. Um, and then I'm trying to think of, see if I'm missing anything. Um, and then as always, a lot of it is because of my director. So I want to give them a shout out. Um, and we also, if you know anyone who is still in need of a lab coat, we only have... Um, we only have, <laughs> I love that. I'm going to put that on my Instagram. Thank you, Alana. We have extra, extra large lab coats. They fit pretty much. The sleeves are just really long. So if you know anyone who still needs a lab coat, we have those. Or we have so many eye clickers. So that too. Um, thank you guys for listening. Yeah, Lisa, you have a question? Yes. Um. I just want to ask if like the price, if like increasing like the amount on food tickets would affect the price of the prices of um, meal plans. Um, I don't know if that would be the way it would so, work. So basically the last time that meal tickets were increased was, I think it was like the year of COVID and they increased it from $3 to $9. But since then the cost of meals have gone up. So the cost of, we did the math. And the cost of one average meal is about, um, the for the cheapest plan, $10. And for the most expensive plan, about $17. And the ticket right now is $9. Um, so I don't think um, it would be a price increase just because it, it, it is what we're paying for. But I can update once I have the meeting on Thursday because I, I don't know what they're going to tell me. Of course, Alicia. Okay. Um... Next week we'll be expecting transfer student representative report. I guess when uh when uh, Tyra is uh sworn in, so we'll skip that for now. Um, next up we have international student representative. Hi everyone, good evening. I hope you're all doing well. Um, for starters, I just want to express my condolences and stand in solidarity with what happened um to our Asian American community at Monterey Park this weekend. It was shocking sad and unfortunately the 36th mass shooting in the u.s in 2023 and um i think on behalf of usac we just all should like I, I say that we stand in solidarity with what happened um and at the same time i want to pitch um our gaps um resource uh, to anyone who needs it and anyone who wishes to reach out to our organization to please feel free to. We have Dr. Shu Chang Kang, who's specifically um, a counselor for international students and please feel free to book sessions with her. You can call CAPS um, from 10 to 11.30 on Fridays and it starts week three and it'll end by week 10. It's over Zoom and you can call CAPS and you can set a trial appointment with her and whoever needs to. Um, Moving on from that, so this week uh, for my office particularly, um, for starters, we are in talks, I told you, with Kimber Health um, to get subsidized health insurance for international students specifically. And um, unfortunately, the representative who I was talking to left the company. So I'm <laughs> a little behind on that, but I'm getting there. Um, hopefully we should have something with them by next week, materialized with them by next week or next to next week. Aside from that, um, we're getting into our talking stage with the new student advising committees. Um, at, so for the class of 2027, um, just trying to better the resource we created. Um, I see divine, <laughs> I know it's class of 2027 already. Um, we're just trying to get the resource we created for international students, If just seeing if it's catering to them well, enough and anything that needs to be added to it. So by the time September hits and before we get out of office, we're able to put that resource and they're able to actually send it out to the new students who are accepted into UCLA. Um, yeah, and I think aside from that, uh, we're just working with the pre-med society still to kind of come up with a career fair 
um, this quarter or next, towards the end of this quarter or towards the beginning of next quarter, to just catering to international students um, and getting a lot of organizations on board with that. So I'm in talks for a lot of different things that I hope will materialize soon. But yeah, that's it for my office this week. And in case anyone does need to reach out, please feel free to. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we'll get into admin reports. Uh, Orlando. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well tonight. Um, just one update. Uh, this week is our um, one-stop workshops. This is the week where we offer workshops to all the new formed organizations, as well as hosting other workshops that returning organizations may be interested in signing up for. Tomorrow's our in-person day. Uh, it will be in Ackerman uh, in the Bruin reception room. So if you're interested, uh, please stop by. It, we also will have some virtual workshops starting on Thursday, and I will drop this uh, link in the chat. Uh, but that's the only update I have today. Thank you, Jessica. Hi, everyone. Um, so I have a couple events to share with you coming up in the student union. So um, tomorrow we are having a Wellness Wednesday event that's going to be canvas bag painting. So that's from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Bruin Fun Zone, which is on Ackerman A level, um, <clears throat> right next door to Taco Bell. Um, and then on the 26th, um, Thursday, we're doing a Bruin watch party for the men's basketball game that's at USC. So that's going to be at 6 p.m. in the Bruin reception room, um, which that that space is on the second floor um, next to the grand ballroom uh, in Ackerman. So if you want to stop by for that, um, we also are co-programming um, and in the process of planning a Super Bowl watch party with Dashu. So that's going to be on February 12th and um, I'll share more information about that as I get it. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention uh, this week, I'm going to be meeting with Karen Hedges. Um, and I um, invited Sydney to join the meeting too, just to go over the appointments system. Um, so we're going to be looking at it and seeing, you know, how can how can we provide additional support for that system so that it's a little bit more clear of a process to use for you all and you know not too um not too cumbersome to get through your appointments so um if anybody has specific feedback on like that form that's in my UCLA um or things that you want us to look more into please um feel free to email me any notes you have and, um, you know, we'll be going over that process and sort of identifying how we can, you know, help a little bit streamline, keep track, keep better track of the appointments, and then also be able to help facilitate those appointment letters that get sent out after council approves um, the appointments. So we're going to kind of be like deep diving into that. So if anybody has any thoughts on any of that process, let me know um so that I can bring that up in that meeting um other than that um you know just working on a lot of um contracts and agreements and we got some offer letters going around so um you know if, if your office has sent any to me we're working through them um and just bear with me um as we kind of uh get those signed and sent out and you know if anybody has any anything big coming up for your office um, that you want to put on my radar ahead of time, let me know, um, and also free to meet about it as well. But um, that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Steven, is Steven here? All right, Steven's not here. Uh, what about Lauren? Is that Lori? Not Lori. Lori, I'm sorry. <laughs> All good. Um, just a couple things. I walked with Nicholas from Phoebe's office to um, work on finalizing late night study nights in Wooden for finals week. Looks like that's going to go through. I also connected her staff um, with Angela Scales and Campus Life and Coke has agreed to provide drinks during late night study. 
Um, so students can stay caffeinated or hydrated or whatever your choice is. <laughs> um, and then REC has launched their open REC dance program um, that can be found on the REC website. Um, I don't have a contact for anyone in the world arts and culture department. So if anybody does, can they shoot me an email or introduce me? Because I would like to get that information to that department so their students can take advantage of the open rec dance. And then um, Tyra, welcome to the club. Uh, I work in recreation. I'm an event production manager and happy to work on spaces for events with you or anything else you need. And I know Sarah Mo is very excited. Thank you, Lori. Is Archie here? Well, Archie doesn't work here anymore, right, Jessica? Um, yeah, you can uh, take his name off the agenda for okay. future council meetings, but yes, thank you. Okay, will he have a replacement or is it just someone else will take on? Yes, no, there is, we are gonna be hiring a replacement. So I'm working right now on getting that posted to our ASUCLA website to start recruiting. So hopefully we'll have someone soon. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, we don't have any old business. Um, so getting in, getting into new business. So our first thing is a discussion on accountability of USAC funding bodies. Um, so I mean, obviously, first off, I think a lot of people probably seen the article that recently came out by Daily Bruin. Um, rightfully so, right? Uh, they're reaching out asking for accountability of funds that a lot of students are uh, saying that they're not hearing back from, um, that if they are hearing back from, they're hearing back from them very late. And this has been affecting students um, in their events that they hold annually. You know, these are events that they, they've held every year since they've been in college. And a lot of these students ha have had to come out of pocket regarding these events. Um, so I just kind of wanted to, you know, just open the floor up for this. You know, it's a discussion to kind of figure out you know, why things were the way they were, and then what are the plans going forward to um, mitigate those issues so that, you know, we don't have articles written about us every week and we don't have, you know, hundreds of students emailing us and, you know, keep coming to council. So, uh, yes, Alicia. Thank you. I have a lot to get through, but please bear with me. I want to start off by addressing accountability and what that means. One, Specific to CAC, $130,000 exists in ARC and around less than 10,000 is to um, stipend um, the people staffing ARC. Um, two students, one being the commissioner of, one being the commissioner of that office, myself, having to take care of nine different series and running arguably one of the biggest organizations on campus should not, and another and another person should not have the weight of an entire fund on our backs. The punitive approaches that you have directed at me, trying to work against me when you or duty as president is to support your constituents in this council is unacceptable. Instead of trying to work with me and finding solutions with me to help repair and restore not just the issues in, cult in the Cultural Affairs Commission's fund is facing, but everyone else's as well, is a restorative approach to this issue one that affects every org on campus applying. CAC has not singled any applicant out nor discriminated against them. We truly have not been able to function because of no support, and that is not fair for both people working on ARC and those applying. And while I have, while I have not specifically explicitly stated that I need support in the past councils, I feel like I would have, I deserve to have been reached out to because of the multiple times that I have brought up the fact that we have no support. We have no support. And accountability cannot be implemented until we have an actual functioning funding body of staffers to uphold it. That's when you can implement accountability, but not when two students are being exploited and forced to reply to so many organizations when they have lives, when they have other roles and other responsibilities. Concerning the double standard, your message directed at me, I want to bring up how this punitive approach never came up with Theodore, who honestly needed support as well. And maybe he would still be here, not just as a TSR, but also as a student at UCLA. And that's another issue with retention. And I would know as my check on MCAC's retention coordinator. Or Keon on his part last quarter. But when it came down to other people 
all of a sudden, this is the model of accountability in the office of the president. I want to also add that scapegoating and demonizing me was not acceptable. Immediate conclusion that ARC was acting in an, a racial animus is highly offensive and divisive. You're right, Carl, no one is above accountability, and that includes you. It is not fair or just that when I explain the very real way you harmed me and insensitively and inappropriately sent that message to all of council that you immediately again painted me out as playing into a racist caricature. I would have called out the response and approach you had in the same way for every person regardless of any identities. And I want to also address the lack of support that not just ARC is facing, but when the, what can you do as the Office of President for ARC CS Mini that isn't even accessible to students right now, BOD, who had also one person exploited into working this entire fund? Community fund that can't be even launched until surplus is found out. But where is the pressure from you, you representing this council to pressure SGA or to do something about, some, about these things? and these issues in funding. And the other funds that can't function without support from administration and you. And I want to say that I have solutions that I, I, I have initiated because I'm sick of discussions. I'm sick of just coming to council and telling you that I'm trying to figure it out by just one person. I'm saying, I'm proposing that having three to four people from your office or from anyone else's if they're willing to help to temporarily support ARC funding until we get our director and our new staffers fully onboarded. And this would be under the direction and guidance of co the Cultural Affairs Commission and the Arts Restoring Community Fund not to take over and or otherwise alter the structure and function of ARC and the fund. I want to make that very clear. I also want to say that we are drafting a letter to students to post on the Cultural Affairs Commission Instagram to apologize for these delays and fully be transparent. Thank you. And fully be transparent about these issues. I also want to come back to SGA concerns. SGA does need to come before council and the student body publicly and give detailed explanations on why they are struggling and what they need. As president, you should make a public statement on behalf of council delineating the challenges that have plagued USAC funding throughout the year and issuing a call to students to staff these committees lest they want their programs to continue to go with funding issues. Also, back to surplus concerns, I want to really ask what what you can do because I there is I don't see anything being done um, to put pressure on the status of surplus because frankly I have orgs within my commission like needing needing surplus and and we also need it to pay for brew and bash bills that like are overdue but we can't do anything unless we get the status of surplus at least maybe even a little bit because it's not just my office it's literally everyone else here needing funds from surplus what are action items i'd not just not just ask you carl but to everyone here that we can work together on implementing to be service to officers from administration that is all i have to say right now thank you uh giovanni do you mind if i go first since um i had a couple comments directed at me um yeah go ahead Okay, thank you. Um, so thank you so much for your your comments, um, Alicia. Uh, like, I mean, this is one of the main reasons we had this discussion. I mean, if you if you look at the agenda, it says discussion on accountability of USAC funding bodies, right? So not just yours, not just um, you know uh, the academic affairs commissioners, but bodies, you know, plural. So uh, because obviously we've had you know uh, problems staffing these apparently and. Um, there's been complaints, not just from your office, uh, about your office, but also other offices. And so that's why we were having this discussion. Um, I don't understand why you've taken anything that I've said personally. I, I mean, I don't understand what you expected me to do when I've had several organizations stop me personally, when I've had several people email, um, when this, when there was a news article written on behalf of this. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you expected me just to just not talk about this, not bring this up as a point of discussion. Um, in regards to you trying to imply that, you know, Keon or um, Theodore weren't held accountable, I mean, that discussion was brought up. You know, I missed one meeting and that was brought up as a term of, oh, let's hold uh, officers accountable. So 
on the same day, I, in, on, on that same day that we had that discussion, someone came and complained about your committee specifically, like two or three students came and complained and no one said anything. So, I mean, this has been something that's been going on since last year. Um, and I don't, I, I don't see why you just don't understand. Like, it's not a personal attack. It's, it, it's nothing against you, but we are first, first and foremost, you talked, you talked about my commitment to council. You're, you're correct. But I'm also, uh, I have a commitment to the student body who pays us their student fees and you do as well. Um, I'm not expecting you to be a robot and to answer 200, 300 emails a day, but a simple, I mean, email, I, I mean, SGA has done it right when fernando was understaffed he had an email set up so when someone emailed him he'd be like hey i'm going to get back to you like i'm understaffed right now i mean something of that nature but it seems like none of that was done and specifically speaking um the 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 organization that i emailed you about from speaking with the person um in person when they, they stopped me about this uh i was just relaying their concerns right and, and it doesn't matter like how things how, how you think things are going sometimes it's about like how it's perceived and how it's looked and the way a lot of thing, these things have looked is that there have been several emails sent by individual organizations and there's been no response whatsoever and one thing i'm just sad about is that not once have you took any accountability whatsoever on your behalf you, you haven't said once that okay this is my shortcoming or hey i couldn't i could have communicated this better or hey i could have done this better you, you haven't communicated that once you've pushed and blamed everybody you said that you've been exploited and you've said you you blamed everything that's currently going on with your office and your funding on everyone else that's been there's been no self-accountability and i'm not asking you to sit here and bash yourself but i'm asking you to take at least some responsibility for uh, the way the cultural affairs commission like the funding is currently currently because at the end of the day you're the officer you're the one that wanted to run for this position you're the one that got elected and so you're the you're the one that's responsible and i will help you out uh, i wish you would have reached out to me earlier i will give you six individuals uh, i mean you name how many many individuals you you need i'll try to get them um, i have a team of 75 so i'll help you out let me let me know what you need they'll be completely um under your charge um, and yeah, we'll, we'll go, go forward that way. But as I stated before, there, there should be no reason that anyone feels personally attacked. Accountability is accountability and no one is above accountability. No one. Giovanna. Um, I, I don't want to like detract from what we're talking about too much, but I think SGA does kind of have a part in what's going on. Um, and I've personally had, I've had to spend like basically the entire summer while planning Bruin Bash with Alicia, like catching up on past requisitions that were just like forgotten about or just lost behind because of understaffing and issues that were going on there. Um, I think that they're getting on top of their stuff now, but to my knowledge that they're having like, um, they're having to redo like an audit, like they still haven't been able to undo the audit and stuff like that, which is why surplus has been so delayed. Um, I, I think it would be a good like conversation, at least for like the offices that work with SGA a lot um, about like ways that we could improve what's going on there, because it is like for any large requisition I have, I have to like personally go into the office to like follow up on stuff. There's a lot of mistakes that happen, like checks sent out to wrong addresses and wrong names, like just like a lot of stuff that personally reflects on my organization badly. Um, but I, I think that that's like maybe a separate conversation, but I also think kind of relates to this stuff um, and not to like, I mean, no, I am like kind of defending Alicia, like coming into this role, she is like, I do believe she is trying pretty hard and it is like a lot of things to do at once considering the nature of CAC. Um, and I don't believe that that like fully takes away accountability, but I do think that like the nature of our offices are kind of similar. And I do want to say that, like, I think that there is a little bit of understanding there, but I understand it wasn't like a personal attack or anything, but yeah, that was my thing is SGA is something I would really want to talk about um, in the future as well. Uh, we can come back. To, we can talk about that too tonight if you want. Uh, Naomi. Yeah. So I just want to say, I feel like, first of all, I feel like Alicia has taken accountability um, at various moments throughout comes various council meetings. Maybe it was the one you weren't here for, um, but she's apologized profusely to clubs. She's um, had to like not do like how she said in the email, like 
can do homework, like has to focus on this. Um, when really we are students, um, like we're undergraduate students at the end of the day. Um, for me personally, I'm always gonna put my education first. Um, even though I did sign up for this role, like you said, like I'm not saying that she's past accountability, um, but she has apologized profusely to clubs and she's trying to explain like why things have occurred. Like, I don't feel like when she says like, okay, we're getting this many applications, like that's like like putting it on like the club saying like, oh, like they're putting in too many applications. I feel like she's just trying to explain like why that's overwhelming being up, like only having two people working on it. So I don't completely agree with your point there. And I will also say like the support, like my advisor for just reach out to me last week, what week are we in? Like, according to my updates, I'm on, we're on week 36. That is absolutely fucking absurd. Like to just be reached out, like as like to reach out to me to establish our first meeting. So that just goes to show like, and Otherwise, I didn't get a transition material for this role. I've had to learn everything as I go. And I feel like that speaks for a lot of us here. And I'm so glad to see the work that we've done and how we keep like persevering through the struggle. But it should we shouldn't have to struggle. So <laughs> not that, yeah, Eliana, exactly. Did anybody get any good transition material? I'd be glad to know. Um, which is why we've seen so many people and why we had to have that kind of be accountability meeting before winter quarter, because this is, this is hard stuff to do. And I really want to recognize that. And I think Alicia's complaints are valid. Like, especially like I'm, I don't over, oversee a funding body. I'm really glad I don't because I wouldn't even know where to start. Um, so I think a lot, there's lack of academy in our advisors and everything going on. And we just really need to support one another. And I know, like, I just, Carl, I don't agree with the email that she sent, especially with adding all of us. Um, I don't feel like we needed all, all of us to be added. I feel like, especially in your first email, it could have been a, like a just a communication with you and Alicia, like to talk about, and the framing of it was very poor. I, I, I see like a, what Alicia is saying there. Um, and I just want to know, like for every complaint that you did receive, like when you say students came up to you, did you slack Alicia? Did you say, let's meet, let's discuss this? Because before going to everybody in that email, I believe a conversation just should have been had between you and her. And I know you said in your second email, you didn't want to have that because you were perceived previously by someone on USAC as being aggressive. But I don't quite... Like, we have to talk to one another. We have to. Like, there's no other way this council works, like, if we don't communicate with one another. So I, I, I see your point, but I don't at the same time. Because, like, a simple email to Alicia, I feel like, would have made this less personal. Because, honestly, in my opinion, it felt like you were singling her out in front of everybody. When Alicia has tried to explain numerous times what's going on, that she's trying and like, so it could have been like a simple, like, hey, like, I know you're doing this. I know you're struggling with this. How can I help you here? Or what do you need from me? Or what can the other council members do? Should we set up a meeting with, have an executive session? Stuff like that would have been really tangible actions, but instead of like a call out feel. So I really hope that made sense. I'm not really trying to get in this because I have other shit that I need to do personally, but I just want to say that. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I guess, like, as I said before, I don't really expect you to understand, um, as the only black man on council, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you've like had people try to, you know, lie on you and say that you're aggressive or intimidating. So I don't expect you to understand, but that's something that I've had, to, I've had to deal with. Um, and so they're just, they're just, when it comes to accountability, I'm going to do it in a group setting, right? Because I'm not going to have anyone like lie on me and say that I'm coming off a certain way. Um, so I, I understand that. Um, that's okay. You can you can disagree with me, but that that's fine. Um, in regards to just the, the the specifics of what you stated about how I could have went a certain way, I mean the, the the same could be said for Theodore, right? When we had the the accountability email, the accountability thing with Theodore, I mean how many how many individuals reached out to him personally, right? When we had a transfer who who is not only his first year. No, I'm sorry. When we had a transfer, it was his first uh, year in college and also his first year on council. How many individuals secretly messaged him and asked him how he was doing when he was 
secretly struggling the whole time to maintain a good GPA to stay in school. So, I mean, the same could be said for, because you you were a big advocate of, of, of calling him out and, and holding him accountable. So I'm just, I, I don't understand now why it's different. Like what, what, what what's different now about this? Would you like a response to that? Or yeah, do you yeah, wanna... yeah, it's open, yeah. I know plenty of people on this council that reached out to him. I unfortunately couldn't go to um, his little Thanksgiving thing because I was out of town. But I know even at that, like Phoebe had conversations with him. Sarah had conversations with him that I personally know because we talked about this as a council. Like, okay, now now that we like, indeed, thank you, Phoebe. And Danny too in the chat saying that she had a whole phone call with him. Like he reached out to the advisors to have a, com like he had conversations. He was telling us every week in his updates, like, hey, we're just trying to get this done. He's working, he was working on hiring, but it didn't we it didn't get to a point like I want to say like there was multiple check-ins with him before we had that accountability meeting we didn't just from the gate be like oh hey you're not doing your shit like we we gave opportunities and chances and then it finally led up to that it wasn't like I didn't like blast him on email I didn't blast him in front of the whole thing we were having a conversation where all parties knew what we were agreeing to when we entered that conversation Okay, but, and I spoke with, I, sp I mean, we spoke about this last time when someone came personally and, and, and complained about this, this funding body. We spoke about this, and I told individuals on council, and you guys go check the minutes. I said, hey, if, you, if, if people need help, like, making appointments, like, let me know. I'll share it on Instagram. You know, I'll reach out to whoever I, I can reach out to. I think Phoebe was the only individual so far who's actually reached out to me for a specific uh, appointment that, that she needed help filling. So the like help has been offered right maybe not in a specific way because as you stated before i don't i, I i'm not in control of the funding body and i i can't help someone who i don't know needs help in in, in a specific way but funding what i mean help was offered in in ways um so i understand where you're coming from i understand like you feel the way you feel but i i don't regret the way i handled that situation i think i handled it very professionally and you know in the future that's how i'm going to handle situations because as i stated before um, as a black man and as the only black man on council, um, I, I won't be perceived as being aggressive or if someone will make that, then I'll make sure that the, account, the entire council reads whatever I put out so that it can come to their own conclusion. So I appreciate you though. Um, Anna? Um, hi all. Okay, so I did, I'm going to try to take this back to the conversation about funding bodies, and I know that this is, like, there are a lot of people that have comments, but, um, so I'll keep this brief, but one thing that I do think we also need to address is, like, going to, and we talked about SGA before, but going into SGA and talking to the individuals there, like, you can see that they are working really, really hard, um, and that I think that, like, within like my commission and others that I've like had conversations with, it's very easy to place blame on them without going in and talking. Um, so I think that that is a pretty big part is to have compassion for the people that we are working with. And yes, there is accountability that is needed. Um, so just conversations, but it's also on us to have those conversations and go and talk to the individuals that are um, running it and leading it. And then that also helps with answering questions from other students. And then touching on being like on running funding bodies, it is a very difficult job. And I think that a very large part of it, like for example, the Student Wellness Commission has um, the programming fund. And so we have a lot of different applicants that apply to that. And I think that it's important to recognize that the people that you assign to those positions also do need to be held accountable as well. Um, that is one factor. If it can, if it's an aspect of like being a, of reading applications and sifting through them and approving them and having the manpower, um, communicating with people within your commission and then also outside of it. And this is just from my personal knowledge of us running um, the programming fund for many years. And luckily this year there haven't been any issues, but I'd be happy to speak about this offline as well when it comes to. Um, structuring these programs. Alicia? I want to start off by saying I have never called you intimidating, Carl. 
and I have never found you aggressive. I said that I found it insensitive for you to not listen to my explanation of why ARC is struggling and why we need support. I said it was inappropriate to send it to all of council when it was a CAC matter. That is what I said. I didn't even demand an apology. I, you took that out and you didn't even respond to the solutions that I had like, or like the concerns I had brought up in my, my other email. And I also want to say that I think it's a common trend for people to have to go to you to get support instead of you having to go to them because this is your counsel and you're responsible for helping your fellow officers because we are also your constituents. You lead this and we need more leadership from you to be working with us instead of against us because right now it just feels like you're criticizing me when there are other body funding bodies that also like need to have like a like a restorative approach instead of a punitive one to help like build these funding bodies back up that's all i'm like that is literally it you could have had a conversation with me you could have scheduled a one-on-one -on -one with me i would have been glad to work with you but you instead come and criticize me in front of everyone rather than like offering offering a, a like a helping hand and that like truly but i'm really sorry if that's how it came off i'm really sorry i never intended it to come off that way i was just explaining the situation that i am experiencing in this role and the support that i need Daniela. Yeah, I just want to start off first by addressing transparency um, on behalf of ASRF and TGMF. Um, some of this was already touched on the Daily Bruin article. Um, I did have that interview last week um, since they did reach out to me, and I'm not sure if any other council member also received a request. But um, basically, both funds were overseen by two directors that were appointed over the summer, um, at which point, once we transitioned into the fall quarter, the funds opened up to the student body. Um, we had some issues from the start in terms of like supporting both directors to collaboration with each other. Um, and I think that led to a lot of burnout on one, which resulted in resignations on both parts um, amidst fall quarter. Um, and thus, one of the directors really supported me in finalizing the work that they had started, but effectively, I had to wrap up both funds on my own simultaneously while trying to, one, get access to two emails that we still have no access to, which has all of the documenta original documentation around both ASRF and TGMF. Um, and in addition to that, we've also had to, we were trying to initiate hires for new finance directors. Um, we launched an application in the fall quarter. Um, we do currently have two new directors that I spent a lot of time onboarding towards the tail end of fall into winter break and into early winter quarter. Um, so these two funds are operating now and students are now receiving communication out of the AAC email because of the and access to the two ASRF and TGMF emails. Um, that information has been updated in the contacts on the USAC funding West website as of last week, but we cannot update that information on the guidelines until we have a complete constitutional, constitutional, constitutional review committee, which needs to be appointed by this council since Teddy resigned from his post at the end of winter break. Um, so that's another pending action item that needs to be addressed by this council because until we do that, we cannot update the guidelines to give students the accurate information. Um, but we are trying to work with the other methods that we have at hand to reach out to students. We are reaching out to students um, from the AAC email directly, like I mentioned. The two finance directors are meeting regularly on a weekly basis in person um, late in the evenings on Thursdays to review applications as they come in on a rolling basis. 
Um, and I can see the communication that they're having back and forth with students since we all share this email. Um, I've also been into the SGA office. I spent a lot of time there myself last week. I met with Linda one-on-one. -on -one. I also met with Josh to discuss other AAC budgetary concerns. And I spent a lot of time working on making those updates um, for various hours um, myself last week. And yeah, that's in regards to ASRF and TGMF and how it's operating currently. If anyone does have any questions, please let me know. I would appreciate some assistance from council and just like disseminating the fact that we are operating the funds out of a different email um, and to contact the AAC email instead of going to the ASRF and TGMF ones, because if they do have concerns and they're sending them there, we have no access um, or ability to communicate with them through that channel. Um, but in addition to everything else that's been mentioned, um, I agree with what Naomi mentioned and everything that Anna mentioned in regards to SGA as well, um, and Alicia as well. I, I hear that there are a lot of tensions in the room. Um, the biggest point that I want to have come across right now is that there's no reason why being a part of USAC should be as dehumanizing as it is. Um, I want to center again what Naomi mentioned, where all students, meaning that we are all paying the student fees that get funneled into the funding bodies that we run. Um, and thus, I do think that we have a strong vested interest beyond just being the appointed council members that manage these funds and seeing that those funds are allocated in an equitable manner. Um, but I feel like the space isn't breeding the collaborative environment that we need in order to make those funds successful. It's not breeding compassion and empathy. And I recall that when we first started our trainings, like way back in spring quarter, there was a strong message around accountability, but there's no reason why that accountability should be so punitive. I would also like to highlight that if orgs have reached out to you personally, Carl, I would like to emphasize that word personally. Those student org leaders had the grace to reach out to you one-on-one. -on -one, and I feel like by following that model, it would have been a lot more efficient to have implemented that with individual councils, counselors, council members as well. Um, because I agree that the method that was utilized blasting the email, including everybody, wasn't the most empathetic way of going about the situation. And I don't know that it was also the most efficient way about garnering results for the concerns of students um, and getting them the answers that they needed. And I would also just like to also add on to the concern about just staffing shortages in USAC. Like I mentioned, we did have to launch an application. We received one applicant, so one person who was interested in becoming a finance director. Um, and I ended up with two because I basically had to like sell the position to another one of my senators. So again, like now we have the same student leaders who are taking up a lot of work and that is not fair to them either and their capacities and their responsibility as students, which has to come first above any other matter. And so I really just hope that with this discussion, like as we're talking about transparency, compassion, empathy, that we extend that to ourselves and to each other as well. And that's all. Eliana. Just want to emphasize building off what Danielle and Naomi, Alicia, a bunch of people have been talking about is it looks like we have a systematic problem here. I mean, it's been going on is like Alicia and Jeffrey have been doing, I think it's supposed to be the work of six, seven people. And they've been doing it by themselves and the same with people in Daniela's office and Lon's office. I mean, I've had, it doesn't become a daily booming issue or whatever because my office is, doesn't control funding body, but definitely in terms of staffing and in terms of 
SGA understaffing. I've had same kinds of issues. So I think at the end of the day, we have is not something that's gone wrong with Alicia or Daniela or or Carl or anybody, but we have a systematic problem and I think it should always be approached that way. Like that's that's the core here. There's no way that two people doing six or seven people's work is going to go well. It's the same problem we had with why a lot of us just got our grades and some people still haven't because you have the professors, even in addition to the fact that people were withholding grades in solidarity. The strike, there's just a food fact. You have the professors without so much of the valuable labor, uh, valuable exploited labor of the graduate students. And a lot of students don't get their grades on time and get suffer in a lot of ways. And it wasn't because of anything. It wasn't an individual problem. It was a systematic problem. So I think the same here. At the end of the day, we're going to have to, we're going to need to try to get to the bottom of why is there not enough staff for anything that happens here and what what I don't know what the solution to this is but I think we need to find it unless we just want to stay on like a hamster wheel that's driving I think everyone in this room crazy. Phoebe? Sorry was that my name that was just said okay awesome well I think yeah, I agree. I feel like there's a lot of blame going around and like, oh, whose funding body is not getting funding to the students. I mean, obviously the whole, like the Daily Bruin and like the student body thinks we're to blame. And I don't think, like, I think we have a duty to like try to work this out and help the funding bodies get the money. But like, honestly, we, yeah, at the end of the day, we are all students. And like part of the problems are with like SGA and SGS that like we kind of need to fix on that end too. So maybe we can get like a couple of us to like meet sometime to like actually like come up with like concrete action items. Probably not right now. <laughs> Sounds like it'd be a lot, but I think that could be a helpful conversation so that we can know how to support each other better. Um, and I do want to talk about the language in the email just because, you know, given that we're all a part of it, like I don't want to pretend that like I didn't see that email and that like I didn't think it was inappropriate or disrespectful too. I think I'm going to just talk about the first email first. I think it wasn't great that we were all CC'd on it. I mean, it is nice to be aware of these things, but I think using the language, especially like calling out Alicia as cultural affairs commissioner question mark instead of like, you know, by her name respectfully, it was all very accusatory. I think I just don't know if that's the best way of going about like bringing attention to an issue and like, you know, addressing the human behind like the position. So I think that is really important to mention. And then also there's the whole like idea of like the organization too. I feel like it was like a little bit accusatory that like she wasn't giving funding specifically to a black organization. But I do think like generally the fund is struggling across all organizations. So I, I don't know. I feel like it gave an extra edge to the email that I don't know was super great. Um, and then the second email, I'm just going to talk about one or like one phrase in particular. I think the the phrase, I am sorry you feel that way, came up a lot, like multiple times, like in different paragraphs. And I feel like that's just like not a very compassionate way of going about listening to somebody. But, um, you know, I'm glad that you're looking out for the student body. And I think maybe we can all improve like how we can support these funding bodies in the future. Thank you, Phoebe. I appreciate your, your comments. Um, I just wanted to say that like, you were the one that called me intimidating one time. So if you disagree with the way that I proceeded to address this, this situation, like you're to blame a little bit. So I just wanted to put that out there as well. Like you called me intimidating from a very simple message. So that's the way that I, you know, kind of operate now. So, I mean, it is what it is. I, I don't really care to go back and forth in regards to, you know, but okay. we're, yeah, but Sorry. We'll, move on to, we'll move on to my line. Do I get a response to that or no? I mean, you you can't. You, uh, Milana had her hand raised next, but you, you can go if you want. Yeah. I mean, I based off of your email and reading that again, one, I appreciate you for bringing it up again because I, I, I read the email like once and I was like, wait, was that me? And then, okay. So thank you, Carl, for clarifying that today in this meeting. I, I do want to highlight that 
I, I guess I can see, I can see the concerns of like me portraying this image of you that like might be unfair and seems like I could be portraying a person of color in a bad light. But I also want to mention that I was actually intimidated by the message. I feel like in the language used previously, you did seem to like say that I completely ignored that you didn't want to do something. And I don't think that happened. So I do believe like the language language does matter. So I think it's okay that I said that because that was something that happened and it was true. But I apologize if it created any other effects that I didn't mean to happen by portraying you in a light that might not be completely the way you'd like to be perceived by people. Milan. Hi everyone. Sorry, I like popped in for this one. I'm sorry that I like kind of missed half of the meeting just because I'm planning the off-campus housing fair on tomorrow, but I thought that it would be good to be present for um, this discussion. Um, but I have a few things, I think two things, but um, the first, I'm like glad that honestly we're able to kind of talk about this now um, because in like my position, I knew that this was an issue, but I'm not, I wasn't quite sure like the extent or like how people really needed support. Um, so I'm glad that I was kind of like kept in the loop on these topics and that we're able to kind of discuss this now as a council, um, even though it's pretty, it's like halfway through our terms, but I'm glad that we're able to address this now um, because if I didn't receive like those emails or if we weren't talking about this, I would be kind of um, confused. But I think the main thing that we kind of mentioned was just like, council supporting each other um and like I think I think I'm glad that we're able to talk about this now because I think we we might need to be a little bit more transparent um with like our needs and our capacities um just because like council I don't know council is here to kind of like or at least I know that I'm here also and then Carl's here to also support council um but it's kind of hard for us because we have like our offices and we have like the work that we need to do so we're trying to keep track of like our office, like council and like, as well as being accountable to the student body for our different events. So we wouldn't know like exactly what's going on because we're not directly involved with your offices um, if you didn't like kind of reach out to us. Um, so I think in the future, like I would love for um, people to reach out to me. Like I know we're all learning and we're all kind of transitioning. Um, so I hope that the student body can give us a little bit more like wiggle room with that. Um, but I honestly, I apologize on my part for not extending as much help um, as the IVP. Um, but, and I know that I wouldn't like 100% understand like everyone's funding struggles because my office doesn't manage um, any funds that go out to students. Um, but if you did need my help, like I hope that council um, doesn't hesitate to reach out to me um, and I can try and do whatever I can to kind of support you all. I just haven't been getting like any asks for help. And I, I wasn't sure how to like help everyone um, just because my knowledge is very limited. Um, on the basis of funds. Um, but if you all need any support, like don't hesitate to reach out to me as well um, because I'm also here if you all <laughs> need any help. Um, and then another thing that I want to bring up is like bringing this conversation. I know that we're talking about like accountability, but I think we also need to look at the situation as, um, as like students and also student leaders. Um, I think like we're, we're talking about council, but I think if we put ourselves in the shoes of students, um, I just have like a few questions about like, like what solutions do we have for students who have been affected um, by these funding delays and like, like what is being done to make sure that the events that students have asked like for allocations for, um, that they can get the funding for that so that it doesn't affect like the students as a whole, because I know that if these funds are kind of delayed and I know um, there are reasons behind that, but I think we, instead of like kind of accusing each other and like, like talking about um, intercouncil, I think we should really look at the bigger picture um, and see how like students are being affected and how we can kind of like make this easier for students just because they're kind of like the innocent, like, I don't know, like they, what we do as a funding body, like it really affects students. And I know students have expressed that. Um, so I'm just wondering like how we're going to accommodate students. And then also I know that um, this one, like this council is just really, really hard because everyone's trying to like make in-person events and, um, and I know that my office, we've been trying really, really hard to, to kind of make in-person events for students and try, and I know COVID is not completely over, um, but we're trying to make like events more interactive and make it more fun. 
Um, so there's just like a lot that we need to learn and we don't have any precedent. Like we didn't get many transition docs. I knew, I know I got one, um, but it was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't very like extensive. Um, so I think that, um, I think that coming back from COVID, like we should look into how we can prevent the, these conflicts and like these things from happening for future councils as well. And I think that's why we're also having this discussion. So maybe moving away from um, kind of accusing each other to like, how can we prevent this in the future? Um, and just like how we can help students right now who are who are affected by these funds. Um, but yeah, yes, okay, I'm done. Thank you, Milan. Uh, we'll go in order, uh, Daniela, Eliana, Alicia, Sarah, and then we'll move on to the next discussion. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank Milan because when these issues started to show up for ASRF and TGMF, um, I believe that a student had emailed IVP um, and she immediately like forwarded that email to me and actually checked in um, on a personal basis. And that was probably like, I don't know, like one of the most successful ways that I experienced to have been offered support from council thus far. Um, and just to be honest with y'all, like, I think we have to be authentic in this conversation and the conditions that we're operating in as a council too. Like, it's not the most collaborative space. Um, and I feel like as a result, it's also not the most empathetic space too. We haven't had the opportunity to breed relationships as council members, let alone understand each other as students or as human beings. Um, and another point that Milan mentioned too that I would like to piggyback off of as well is like this shift that UCLA has gone into towards more in-person style events has also resulted in more demands from funding bodies that have not been comparative to what the past few years of commissions have had to endure. And their expectations are very different from what at least for ASRF and TGMF that we have the capacity to meet. We have in total from those funds around like $46,000. 16K of that goes to ASRF, 30K of that goes to TGMF. A lot of students apply to TGMF and it has become even more so overwhelming to meet all of that in light of resignations, um, a great loss of institutional knowledge over the years of how funding bodies operate and shortages on top of that in staffing. Um, but now also if you add to the mix, like the lack of collaboration, support and empathy that is existent in the USAC space. Um, so those are all like active issues that I think we need to work in addressing um, parallel to the discussion of USAC funding bodies and that accountability. Um, but then another thing that Phoebe mentioned about um, the responses that were being had in regards to like the phrasing of, I'm sorry you feel that way. I think that if we're in the, on the topic of accountability, that phrase is a little bit triggering for me to read at the very least because it shifts the blame onto how the person is feeling as opposed to taking accountability for the actions that have resulted in those feelings. Um, and so I really just hope that by taking the space to be transparent of that right now in a public setting, that council can be more mindful about the language that is utilized when we are sharing space with each other. Eliana. Thank you, Carl. So I just want to mention in terms of solving this, feel like be helpful if everyone who can would see if their staff or themselves would be able to just work on ARC or one of the other funds to help clear the backlog. So I think, yeah, I've already did this and I've, I'll be trying to work on it myself and whoever, whatever I can get from doping under staff. Yeah, I'll be working on that and I'll get, so if any, just feel like that'd be a helpful thing for anyone who wants to put in something concrete to just be like, okay, me or my staff can help work on this and clear the backlog. And yeah, I think that sort of stuff is what we need right now. Plus, 
yeah, I think that's it. And I think there is also want to point out, I think Melissa Valuse Abraham, who's one of the really good advisors we had pointed out a while ago, that we're kind of that there is often among student leaders an element of like crabs in a barrel, you know, you're in like an unnatural, unhealthy environment, and then it leads to all this conflict. So I think it's always helpful to step back a bit and think like what difficult conditions are there, not to refrain from fixing a problem, but to try and not make try not to see each other as the problem as much as we can avoid that. And just yeah, I love you all. I know you're all working hard. Alicia? Yeah, I want to reiterate how you were telling me and sort of mocking me earlier by saying that, like when I expressed that I felt exploited in this role, um, you said like, it's just me not being like accountable to um, my responsibility here. But I want to add how incredibly patronizing and manipulative the language in that those emails was not referring to me by my name not kind like not approaching me in a kind manner to actually come up with a solution when that's something in in your responsibility as president to do um i also want to add that your response to naomi was incredibly like lacking an understanding of intersectionality and it felt like you were taking away like or like undermining like the fact that she's also a black person and at that a black woman um that also experiences discrimination and has to navigate life and you kind of silenced that and that was not okay um and it's important for you to acknowledge that and build a space for people to be heard because you're not listening to our frankly like our apologies our explanations you're not listening you just try to shift the narrative and say, I'm sorry, you feel that way and go on and not actually address like what I'm what I'm telling you or what other council members are telling you. And that's not OK either. Sarah. Um, I think I, 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 I guess I just wanted to make a quick comment. Um, I, my name was mentioned before. One thing I just wanted to say was I, I didn't have, I don't think I had that many, one, I didn't have that many conversations with Teddy. Um, but the I think the much more important thing is just all of us in this, we're all sort of in this role together and we're all sort of in this role. No, 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 you're fine, Naomi. I just like, I wanted to wait for everyone to say what they had to say. We're all in this role and we're all sort of in this role together. And we're the only 15 people who know what it's like to be in the position that we're in. Um, and we're also in a very special role where a lot of students are, um, holding us accountable, um, holding us accountable. And we have the power to actually help them like do things that they want to do. So I don't think anyone, Alicia or Carl was got coming forward with malintent, but more trying to serve the students in the best way that they can. Um, and I, cause I have worked, I mean, so far this year with both of you. Um, and I know that both of you are very hardworking and dedicated. I also think to piggyback on an issue that was said before, um, some of the issues, um, that have happened to is just because of a lack of like overall transparency within USAC. And then also a lack of transparency in regards to just the transition with, I think, especially specifically with administration, just because students because of obviously the the nature of USAC we come and go however administration is are the people who are here year after year so I think there was just a lack of communication as to what our responsibilities were at the beginning just so that was something that I personally struggled with and I, I think a lot of council members have echoed that so I just wanted to sort of add um my two cents to to the to the conversation I hope I hope that was helpful Okay, one is the last one. Okay, so Eliana brought this up and I really wanna stress this, um, that this is a, a systemic problem and we need to address it in, in, that, in that manner and treat it treat it as, as it is. We are not gonna solve all of this tonight. 
Um, it's 10 p.m. I've been awake since five. I haven't eaten today. I wanna go to bed. Um, so here's what I'm gonna propose. Um, sorry, let me mute my notifications. Um, I feel like we should, um, it was amazing that we are airing all of our, um, that we are having a conversation. Um, I feel like now it's time to work and get some, get, get to the action items. Um, even though some were mentioned, I feel like um, having reoccurring weekly meetings separate from council um, that are not public for us to be collaborative and productive together would be amazing. So um, to do so, here's the action item that I'm gonna put out one to the student body, but specifically for council members. Um, tonight, I'll send everyone a one to me poll. Actually, I'll send it right now. Um, and I hope that um, everyone can attend, but specifically offices who are um, of concern, please try your best to either attend yourself or send a representative to just work. Just sit and put pen to paper, start getting on those emails, reviewing um, your workload. And so we can start delegating work. Um, because like I said, like Eliana said, this is not gonna get solved tonight. It's 10 p.m. y'all. Y'all deserve rest. Um, we deserve peace. I don't want to be funny, like, <laughs> this is funny, but, like, I don't want to be funny, like, I'm just done. So, um, fill out the one to me poll. We'll get to work. Thank you, Juan. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Let's have a, let's do the one to me, set up a meeting about this. I think every council member that can spare people to work in these funding bodies in temporary positions should give up individuals. I have six right now that I know I can give up um, from my, fi my finance department. Um, and then I also have interns coming in. I know other individuals have internship offices. So what we'll do is we'll, let's get a number, all the, the funding bodies that are currently understaffed, get a number of how many people you think you need or you know overshoot that. And then we'll, um, we'll have, a, we'll, let's do the win to meet. Hopefully we can meet uh, like this weekend or something and get those individuals in those positions so that we can start helping people out and uh, you know, get getting uh, the train back on the tracks, all right? All right, next up, uh, discussion about in-person meetings. Um, I'm gonna ask someone to move to table this to next week, is that cool? So Everybody? cool. Please. Okay, yes. can you motion that? Uh, I motion to table in-person meetings to next week's council. I second. Okay, key on motion, Sarah seconds. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, by a vote of 14 to zero to zero, the motion passes and we'll be talking about that next week. Beautiful. Okay, thank you everyone for coming today. Oh, wait, Juan, you got your hand raised? I sent the one to me in the Slack. Fill it out right now. Let's not get off this call until everyone fills it out right now. All right, I'm down for all right. Everyone fill out the ones to me for one kills us. <laughs> this is the action that the student body deserves. <laughs> Shut up. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, Jessica, can we also work on making sure everyone's getting paid? Because I know some folks still haven't been. Is that something? 
Yeah. So, um, to my knowledge, everybody is, um, I had a payroll report pulled, um, like a couple weeks ago and almost everybody was on there. So, um, just make sure you're checking your UC path account, um, to see your pay stub. And then if you haven't been processed in the system yet, you should be in the next pay period or if for whatever reason, you know, your UC path looks a little weird. Um, just email me so I can look more closely. Um, but everybody should be in um, and having their stipends processed. But I know the, the way the pay periods work, um, after the pay period closes, it's like about uh, like a week and a half later that the paycheck appears. Okay. So there is some delay between closing the pay period and then getting the pay to show on your easy path. So sometimes it seems like you're not in and process, but you know, it, it just, it's upcoming. The next paycheck is due on February 1st. Sounds good. So if you don't see anything on February 1st, <laughs> please email me and I'll try to see what's going on. But, um, I know I've also seen a lot of transactions for the last pay period that just closed uh, for most, if not all of you. So again, if there's anybody that like is just not showing in your UC Path account at all, please reach out to me. Thank you, everyone. Anything else from anyone? Um, I think everything, yeah, we're we're done with the agenda. So I know I see some individuals still filling out the uh when to meet. So please just fill that out by tonight if you can or tomorrow morning. I'll just uh, message everyone who hasn't filled it out by then so we can get a time to meet. Um, but yeah, I adjourn this meeting at uh 10 02. Appreciate it. Good night.